listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. I'm going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On a big, nice burgundy snowboard. All right. We got another episode of the bomb hole for you guys today that is presented by Pub Beer. Now, we always got to ask, Study Buds, how are we doing today? So good, my dog. That was good. That was smooth. That was crisp. Thank you. To my left, we have Hannah Eddy in the booth. Hannah, how are you doing? I'm doing lovely. Thanks for having me. Love to hear that. Thanks for coming on the show. For our listeners, our community that are unfamiliar with Hannah Eddy, Hannah Eddy is a gem of our snowboarding community. She's a phenomenal snowboarder and an even better artist. Her art is massively inspiring, whether it's on a mural, a snowboard, a canvas, a coffee cup. It oftentimes includes powerful messaging relevant to to today's issues, female empowerment, all kinds of awesome stuff. Uh, We're going to talk about the parallels between art and snowboarding. And she's got a lot of layers to her, not just an artist, not just a snowboarder, all kinds of good stuff we're going to get into. It's going to be a good one. But first things first, I think we should start off with what we did last night. Hannah, what did we do at the office last night? Last night, we had a little bomb hole paint night. Guess little, who little our model party. was? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'd like to, I think it was Stony Buds. Yes, it was. It was my first <laughs> time. It was my debut. debut. I'm surprised it was your debut, to be honest. I mean, I've you modeled before, it. but I haven't done it for art, let's say. And we did do, we did naked uh, yes. modeling. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was first, tasteful, though. It was yeah. really tasteful. It was first time for me doing nude. When I came in, I dropped a robe. I was a little nervous. <laughs> And uh, it was colder in here than I expected. <laughs> yeah, so that there was, was shrinkage. It was, was shrinkage, but it, it was great. It was actually not naked, but he did sit in a chair. And uh, yeah, why don't you, you tell us, you know, what we did and, and who performed well out there in the in the painting department? Well, hopefully we can have a little uh, visual for the listeners. Show but and tell. Yeah. Everyone killed it because art is up to the artist, you know? Grundy's, I think um, you did really good. Thank you. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. You seem to really, <laughs> really thrive. I mean, he kept saying, I fucking love paint night. This is a thing. I think it's going to be a thing. So um, I but did yeah. notice he brightened up a lot and like he found something in himself last night. Thanks he to did. You. He yeah. did. He dove deep. The pink really, the pink background really, I feel like was a nice touch. Can we talk about um, maybe the Spideros? So, so Danny's our shipping guy, and Jules is our COO here. And um, the Spideros had had some great art. I wanted you maybe touch on on their their paintings. Yeah, Jules, she really killed it. Um, Buds was starting to look like an almond a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> so she really leaned into that and even wrote Buds as almond mm-hmm. just for the viewers to just let them know she, that's what she was going for because mm-hmm. she nailed it. Um, what was the other one? Uh, Danny. Danny. <laughs> Danny just basically matched his shorts to the <laughs> painting. Yes. He was looking down and got inspired. I think I'm not sure if he even really meant to do that, but the purple and orange really, mm. really popped. And he uses a particular kind of paint. Uh, what, what was it called? Gouache. 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 Yes. Gouache. We used. Oh, squash. Gouache. Yep. Gouache. Yeah, with the a big G. Big gouache guy. That's a. It's kind of an advanced paint. For a beginner, but he really leaned into it. You know, it's kind of like a cross between watercolor and acrylic paint, and you got to really get the right consistency. Which I don't know if he. I'm had not it. sure he yeah. did. Let's my head be looked like a, <laughs> my head looked like a pumpkin. No, I'm actually. You did I, have I, a pumpkin I, I actually head. I did a side by side in our group chat last night, and I would say that um, the resemblance between Buds and Danny's painting was uncanny. Uncanny. <laughs> the big orange head. <laughs> we'll let the people d- decide when they view it on Instagram. My favorite part was that the sky just like <coughs> it just stopped. Yeah, it ended. It just ended about two thirds <laughs> of the way down, or maybe a third of the way down. Great yes. use and of uh, the canvas. Obviously, there. Drake absolutely yes. nails yeah, it. He's our graphic designer. He's a, but you know, he's a professional. He's it that's what he count. does. He's, yeah, I'm going to belittle count. him for that, but his was phenomenal. I mean, Jill's. Let's let's Jill give her some props me. on for, the, for the listeners. Explain what Jill painted that pe- that can't see. Jill Perkins painted per- stony buds on an elephant with a rainbow behind him. Wearing board shorts, majestic. Wearing board shorts and maybe like some water shoes. Yeah, or some, definitely some water <laughs> shoes. Like 
tiny little yeah. feet. My feet aren't um, that small, but it's a great, it great was really depiction great. of me. The elephant proportions, I was pretty impressed. But her dad is a fantastic artist. She's got some... Oh, I didn't know she's, that. I yeah. feel like she spent so she a lot then, of time drawing elephants. Like you, know you don't what? just come yeah, in. Yeah, you're not just throw like, oh, maybe I'll there. do an elephant today, yeah. and then it turns out so good. Yeah. I'm actually gonna kind of take her down a couple pegs because her dad's an artist. So she, let's just let's just bring her down to earth because she's got an unfair. Let's talk advantage. about your grandmother, dude. It's true, I do true. have it in my jeans. Yes. I got it in my jeans. You got a new jeans. You're natch. And then obviously uh, you got the painting behind your head here. I Woo. mean, Hannah is a true professional. She knocked it out of the park. My dog's living in my beard. I mean, that's you know magic right there. I have a plant growing out of my head. It's a little different style for me. I love me, it. I love but, it. But, you know, we went wet on wet. When your paint doesn't ever dry, I do, like, when I'm painting, every layer dries. Like, I'll even have a hair dryer next to me and, like, dry that shit quick and then layer on top of it. But it's fun to do it like this. Let's say it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. The and wine helped a little bit. Yeah, too. we had a little wine going. No, no charcuterie board, but we, we I, I got to say. We had a master class in painting yeah, going on We had like night. a regular Bob Ross yeah. live in the fridge. Well, incredible. when I came in, you guys were just jamming to Marley. Yeah, we had Bob Marley going. And I was I was feeling the vibes, you know. I'll tell you what, though. Anybody that hasn't painted in a long time, I, I we did this thing because I'm like, it'll be fun. We'll do paint night. We'll get the crew together. It will be dipshits. It'll be great, right? And so all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden we start painting. And I'm like, this is incredible. I'm having so much fun. Like, it's coming together. The colors are popping. I'm just like, this is a, this is a great activity. I mean, in the world where we're in such a, like, like on our screen time phones, like a little analog activity of painting was like, it was wildly more fulfilling than I planned it being. So... Agreed. Do you do it often like that where you have a group effect or do you no, more so never. paint alone? So it's yeah. kind of fun. Getting, it's super having fun. A group and I always try, paint. like, I try to get Tim to paint all the time and he's just like not into not it. Not down. But it's so fun. I love to see people's renditions and just like having fun with it because that's really what it's about. Mm -hmm. So. So, all right, let's uh, let's change gears here, buds. I think we got a great Patreon question to yes, start things off. Yes, we do. And if you sign up to Patreon, you'll have a chance to uh, ask questions just like this one. From Danielle Rittman. Why do you think so many snowboarders are drawn to being artists? No pun intended. Drawn. <laughs> <to> <laughs> That's good. Wow, that is yeah. good. Wow. That's good stuff. Um, thanks yeah. for the question. Um, I would kind of answer it a little bit different because art came first in my life at a super early age. Um, so I'd kind of look at it like why are so many artists drawn to snowboarding? Um, and it's all just creative outlets. You know, for me personally, art and snowboarding really go hand in hand. And I like to have a physical way of releasing my creative energy. And snowboarding is the perfect platform for that. And then having something where it's like more just about me and a calming moment, like Grundy's was saying, like when we're just painting, it's a totally different experience, but it has so many parallels. So I could see why that's a common thing. There's something talking to your partner, Tim, uh, which we'll give him a big old air order, yeah. obviously. Uh, he was saying that you can't make art if you don't snowboard or skate, and you can't skate or snowboard if you're not making art. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so because I started, you know, I got my first skateboard when I was five. My grandma bought it for me, um, and I've, Fell in love with it super early. Yeah, shouts to Grandma Kelly. Um, I was super drawn to that, and I had already been painting and drawing. I think that came first because I don't even remember my life without making art. Like, it was just so natural, just something I always wanted to do. Um, and I have found that I need this balance. And, you know, I'm 35 now, and literally since I was five and then se I was seven when I got my first snowboard and I have had this balance of art and snowboarding and skating and riding my bike and just being outside it's where I find inspiration it's where I remember what's most important I love to be out in nature and like out with my friends having fun and then I'm able to come back home to the studio and be inspired to paint and if Vice versa, if I'm just like painting and like grinding out on a project or like a gallery show or something and I haven't been outside, I start to go crazy. So it's 
definitely a balance of like this physical and mental polarizing parts of myself, but they go so hand in hand. Well said. Uh, let's let's go back to you mentioned earlier getting your first skateboard at five. I want to know what the early days of like skateboarding and snowboarding looked like for you and how they shaped you. The early days were fun. I grew up in Maine, so we were New England respect. Yes. Yeah, that's gotta sick. love it. Yep, uh, great place to grow up, but we were really isolated from what was going on. Um, which was fun. I got my skateboard and I didn't really know like what you do on it, but I figured out pretty quickly like how to push around and like carve around and I like to go fast, but there were not even sidewalks. Like it was the driveway and dirt roads and stuff. So, um, and then snowboarding, my dad worked, he's a naval architect and worked in fiberglass and he went on a business trip he distributed fiberglass to K2 and went on a business trip and they took them all snowboarding and he came home and he's like, Hannah, you need to do this. You're going to love this. So that Christmas I got a snowboard. Santa brought me a snowboard and I was, I remember I was so hyped because I opened the snowboard and I was like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And then it didn't have bindings. And then I opened a box with bindings and I was just like, oh my God, I got bindings too. <laughs> and then I went straight to our backyard and there was like, we had a pretty good little hill and it had a rock in the middle of it. And I just went full, like, I'm just going to air this cliff in the backyard and just full Tommy, like board hit the back of my head. <laughs> just like scorp dog. Full, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Early, er, early scorp. But I got up and I was like, this is so sick. <laughs> and I just was hooked ever since. My sister is a couple years older than me. So she learned, my dad learned, and I learned all at the same time. And we just had a sick little crew. So your your main, are you sugar loaf loke? Are you sugar bush? What's your what was your local stomping ground? Sugar loaf. Bush. You're the loaf. Oh, you're a loafer. Loaf for life. Wow. Yeah. Loafing yeah. for life. Yeah. yeah, penny loafer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is exactly. that the only ski resort up there? What, Sunday what River. Oh, Sunday River. That's oh, right. Sunday River, yeah. Someday That's the bigger. hot spot, right? No, Someday Bigger, we used to call it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's cool about people that grow up like in certain areas, whether it's like Midwest or East Coast or uh, a lot of areas in Canada, you know, the backyard snowboarding to spark it is so cool because mm -hmm. a lot of the people that maybe grow up in SoCal or something, like they drive three hours to the mountain, they don't have it in their backyard. And I think that, that that was like such a cool part of childhood is like go build some shitty jump, fucking try a 180. And yeah, we you, were yeah. backyard boarders for life. I had a little crew. My, my sister and my dad were not as into it as I was, so I had a little crew. Jeff, Nick, Will, Josh... Those are the homies, the OG. But Jeff had a uh, local Mainer weld some rails in the backyard that were so, like, the dude did not snowboard that welded these rails. <laughs> and there were, like, support bars that went out so you could catch no. your nose under them. Oh, my God. We were, it was, yeah. It was fun, though. You know who's from Maine, big snowboarder? Who's that? Mikey LeBlanc. Yeah, the tobogganist. I the tobogganist. Know, I he's know. like holding it down. Yeah, for he's kind of main royalty. Oh, yeah. oh, Almost yeah. as good as Massachusetts, but you guys have a couple ah. hitters. Obviously, Mass is kind of well, king of the castle. That's well, Ver yeah. Vermont, obviously, the best state. He's got Todd I Richards, Big Mountain, gotta... Jeremy Jones. I mean, uh, Jack Scott Brushy, Stevens, I mean, uh, Mike Grad. You know, the list just goes on. Lucas Cole Maven. I'm still hearing the Bridges. She might win with LeBlanc. Yeah, LeBlanc's kind of, that's a heavy one. Did I say Todd Richards? Okay, so we're going to keep going. Maybe three times. Uh, <clears throat> you know what's cool? Just total derail, but I think there's something cool about, you know, you said you painted at a young age and you skated at a young age and like, you know, my, my brother and sister have kids and they love like, they just love painting shit. Like you, you get a crayon or a piece of paper. They're always like accessing that part of their brain and, um, and, and skating is like a young playful activity in the same way. And it's funny, like I see some of my friends that I grew up with that don't do any of those things and they look fucking old. <laughs> and I think that these like these lighthearted fun activities like skating and, and painting, they kind of keep you young. Do you, have, do you have anything to add to that? Definitely. I mean, I think that your inner child just 
maintains if you keep doing that stuff. And, you know, I my style of art is so fun and playful and I do that on purpose because I want the act of making the art to be just as fun as what the art looks like at the end. So, I mean, I just never stopped and I never took a second even to be like, wait, should I grow up now and like get a real job? That never, never really crossed my mind. So I think that there's huge value in just maintaining and doing fun things that are not taking yourself too seriously because we don't even know why we're here. Yeah, that kind of adds perfectly to, uh, we asked you on our Patreon interview, um, maybe words to live by, uh, something along those or lines. Or advice. Or advice. And you, best you just advice had, you've you, ever received. You had, yeah, best advice ever received, and you had a very eloquent answer. I try to live by the fact that we are floating on a rock in space, and none of us know why we're here. So just do the stuff that's fun and makes you happy and feels good because at the end of the day, that's what's important. We're just on a rock flying around through space. We don't know what the hell's going on. Nobody knows the meaning. Just float around on that rock and yeah. What are we doing? What are we doing? Why wouldn't we do fun shit? Yeah. (laughs) Like what? (laughs) And you've certainly set up a life built around that, which we will get into. But I want to go back to kind of where did you go from learning how to snowboard, sharpening your teeth? You know, where did it go from there with your art and your snowboarding? What was the next step? Yeah. So kind of looking back on it for this podcast, like reflecting on kind of my path. Um, After, you know, I got super into snowboarding. Like that was kind of my decision making on everything. (laughs) Um, And I, my first little sponsor was Sunny Breeze Snowboards, which was the shop in Maine. Katie and Billy were the owners at the time. And like I'd rode with them at Sugarloaf because, I mean, literally, I was seven, and I'm small now. Imagine how small. I was like a little peanut snowboarding around with, like, my big ponytail coming out, and I remember, like, there were no girls. We're talking, like, 1995. There were not... It was, like, me, my sister, and our family friend, Ellen, who was older than us, and I didn't see any other girls at Sugarloaf. So it was definitely a noticeable thing, and, like, you know, the shop owners were just like, oh, sick. There's like this, these young girls that are ripping around and like showing up and it's fucking freezing out and they're loving it. And we want to see what's up with them. So we got to be pretty good friends with them. But the funniest part is that I would go in with like drawings and ideas for t-shirts for them. And (laughs) I've talked to Tim about this um, because he was on a completely different program of like trying to be a sponsored snowboarder and like giving people footage and I'm just like going in and giving them drawings of like ideas I think would be sick on a shirt. I didn't even think about bringing in snowboard clips. So then I'm like, okay, well, obviously my head was still in like, I am an artist who loves snowboarding and that's just kind of been my MO the whole time. So after Sunny Breeze stuff, I didn't actually ever make a shirt with them, which is, you know, maybe we could we could bring one back. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Were you anymore. submitting them shirts and stuff? Yeah. They yeah. weren't down. Well, I mean, they were, I don't know. They were probably terrible. I was 12 years old. Oh, <laughs> you weren't quite on the level. You no, know? I bet yeah. they were pure flame. Yeah, I bet I mean, they were dope. Now, now that invoice for that shirt's going to be a little yeah. more, though. Yeah, they they could have had a really They could have got a good deal. deal. They could have got yeah, a good like deal. I would have traded for some, like, Von Zippers or something. You're going to go Von Zips, huh? Yeah. All right. I mean, back then, yeah, for sure. <laughs> now maybe not, but... Um, yeah, so then uh, my first, like, board sponsor was Winter Stick, and they had they were, like, partly based out of Maine. I don't even really remember, but the thing I remember the most is that I got to go in and sit on, in on a graphics meeting, and I was like, this is it. And I was, like, 16 probably, and I was so hyped. I got to, like, help them pick out, like, what patterns were going on. Like, it was just my jam. I mean, my favorite snowboarder and, like, trans worlds were always, like, the buyer's guides because I would just go and look at all the graphics of the boards. Um, so, yeah, looking back on it, I'm like, oh, yeah, art was just, that was it. You know, that was the focus. But so many of my, so many of my life decisions and moves and, like, 
vacations were because of snowboarding. I love that. Now, I got to ask, because we, we talk about this on the show a lot, um, with the parental figures in your life, um, oftentimes they're supportive. Were they supportive for you in your art and your snowboarding? Yeah, my parents were super supportive. That's definitely a trend on this show. Um, I mean, my dad was out there ripping. He was like such a sick Euro carver. <laughs> he had it. I mean, he's still like he can still get out there, which is awesome. But um, yeah, my parents have always been super supportive. I mean, my mom would look at my drawings and just be like, kind of like, oh, this is really cool, but also like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, how did you come up with, like, I'm like 10 years old drawing some crazy weird alien stuff with like characters coming out of beards and shit. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, and my mom just like, wow, what happened? Yeah, where? Like, what? What happened yeah, that you were like, thinking are you of good? these things? Like, do, do we, we need, need to talk to somebody? Yeah, do we yeah. need to get you yeah. a mental health an, profession? An appointment? Yeah. I'm going to bring you here to this place and get you to sit down with this lady. But I always loved that reaction. You know, like, that was a fun reaction. Because she didn't make it, like, she didn't make me feel bad. She was mm. just like, whoa, weird, cool. Yeah. Like, what else you got? You know, so it was kind of like I fed off of that type of reaction from my friends and family and stuff of being like, oh, it's really fun to be this creative artist and, like, coming up with illustrative ideas. I mean, I was super inspired by, like, I'm seeing, like, a rat fink over there and, like, Jim Phillips and skate graphics that I was seeing in the mid-'90s. Um, super illustrative and fun. So I was like, I want to do that. Amazing. And so at that point, you know, you're – what. I don't know exactly what age you're at, but where... Yeah, maybe we're in high school now. High school, now. Yeah. yeah. So where did it go from there? Well, I was taking like AP art classes and thought about architecture and design engineering and that kind of stuff because that was the path that my dad had taken because I always saw him like drawing sailboats and stuff on his drafting table. Thought that was kind of like how you made money as an artist. Um, but deciding what schools I went to, I went and visited... Colorado, which seemed like such a natural, like so many East Coasters end up in Colorado. Yeah. Um, and I was hiking the pipe at Breck, Breckenridge, um, and the CU snowboard team was there, but I, I didn't know it. And at the bottom, there was a dude with a camera and I ended like, we talked to each other and it was Raul and he was one of the coaches at the CU snowboard team. And he was like, oh, cool. Like you're out here to visit CU. So yeah. You gotta give big, Raul big air Raul Pinto. Pinto. Yeah. He started satellite. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dope. Dope yep. dude. Such a good dude. Um, and he was hyping me up and my dad was there and he was just like, oh, this is awesome. Like you should definitely go to Boulder. Like I had already gotten in. I think it was like one of those where I was like trying to decide if I was going to go. Um, and then went and visited the campus and it's like so beautiful. And I was like, definitely going to go here. Um, and then, so made that call, was super hyped on having like a snowboard team, like going out to someplace I didn't know anyone and being like, okay, the snowboard team seemed cool. Like, I think it was cool then. I didn't really know anything. I was from Maine. I didn't know that much. Um, and it was cool then. I'm not sure what's going on, but. <laughs> well, um. you needed to build your community and build your exactly, friends. Exactly, exactly. And, and then the only way to do that, I mean, the easy way to do that is through snowboarding. Yeah, well, a lot and of I those had... kids go to school because yeah. they love snowboarding. That's right. why they find themselves just like you did. Right. And I had been like crazy into soccer also in my, the same time that all this is happening. So I was used to being like, oh, a team is where you go and meet people and do, do that thing. Um, and then I went to orientation, and the only way to take upper-level art classes was to be an art major. So I was like, well, I definitely am going to do that. Um, so I studied art with an emphasis in oil painting, which was super, like, traditional. I learned, like, color theory and how to handle all, like, when you learn with oils, you're learning, like, kind of the finicky, most difficult way to paint so everything else is like pretty easy like much easier after that but there were a lot of rules and I wasn't really down for rules <laughs> so I had some issues where I was like I was really illustrative my as we we're saying my style was fun and 
not really what you would normally see in oil painting. And I would like incorporate phrases and stuff. And my teachers were like, you have to paint over that. You can't tell the viewer what to think. And I was like, I, I get that. But also I'm so inspired. Like my whole life has been like graphics and like there's always like something, whether it's a writer's name or a company name, like there's always text incorporated. So I kind of had always seen that and wanted my paintings to look like that too. So, I mean, school, it was great. Snowboarded, I mean, I took classes two days a week so I could snowboard the rest of the time. So I was just like cramming in art and snowboarding and it was great. Did that classical training really help you become the artist that you are or did it make you decide like, that's not really the vein I want to go. I want to go this way. I think having classical training did help in like, both of what you're saying, like being like, okay, this is what I don't want to do, kind of. So it pushed me to try to maintain the stuff that I really did love to paint. I mean, when you go to art school, they're like, paint this egg. And you're like, why? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's 30 eggs that people drew. Yeah, like and then sick. you have to be like, okay, Jimmy, your egg... Like, that looks good. I don't know. <laughs> but it's got to sharpen, it sharpens your skills. Yeah, and it lighting. Does. It gets does. you thinking about the way light yep. hits a subject, yep. I imagine. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm I'm a big advocate of, like, any aspiring artist to just do what makes sense for them. Like, I don't think school is the reason why things have gone the way they've gone for me. And I think a lot of people benefit or don't, you know, if you... If you've got it, you got it. Like you can practice painting an egg on your own. Like yeah. you don't have you don't have to go to school. Um, I'm thankful that I did mostly for like the people I met and the experiences I had and it got me out of my hometown and stuff. But I don't I think today is a lot different. I mean, that was when what two thousand five to two thousand nine I was in school. I think it's a lot different now. I mean, I could have taken YouTube classes that I would have learned the same shit. So yeah, true, huh? All right, we're gonna take a quick break and talk to you guys about some socks. Jed rides them. Jill Perkins rides them. I ride them. Of course, you know I'm talking about Stance. If you've ever seen a pair of socks with that icon logo on the ankle, then you know about Stance. Stance has been making some of the most comfortable and creatively designed socks. We actually got a bomb hole sock uh, and underwear for the snowboarding community for a while. Lately, their designers have been bringing that same winning formula to clothing. They're making joggers. They're making hoodies, hats, and tees. Toe-to-head comfort and creativity. Head on over to stance.com and use promo code THEBOMBHOLE, all capitals, to save 20% off your first order. All right, we're going to talk to you guys about autumn headwear. Hannah's actually wearing an autumn hat right now. They make the dopest hats. Everybody knows that. Uh, Brad... All band came from Volcom, 32, Holden. He's one of the people in our industry that cares, that gets it. He's one of the best designers. Their whole shtick is that style and creativity matter. I'm actually wearing the Bombhole Autumn beanie here. Uh, they have different fits for different styles. If you want to go Sailor Jerry, they got the, the small one. If you want to go Resi Tip to the Moon, they got that. Um, they got a great team. They got Danimals, Jill Perkins, Taxwood. Again, their whole thing is style matters. So head on over to autumnheadwear.com, use promo code BOMBHOLE, and save 20% off. Get your head looking fly. All right, so I remember at some point around this time period, you got pretty destroyed on a park jump, if I remember cor- correctly. I did, I did. I got two compression fractures in my back, overshooting a jump at Breck. They salted it, didn't block it off. I had been hitting it all morning, but hit it and felt myself just accelerate on the lip and just send it to the moon. Um, The biggest takeaway from that injury, you know, it could have been way worse. I I just had to do PT and put in some work to get back to 100%, but I couldn't paint while I was hurt. And I really realized that that wasn't worth it. Like pushing it on my snowboard to that level just – didn't have the interest that it had before. So that was kind of like a wake up call for me and a cool thing to have. I mean, I was like 19 when it happened, a good time to be like, okay, do I want to be really pushing it on my snowboard and trying this stuff? 
with no real, I never really had any goals of being a pro snowboarder or anything. I just liked to learn and progress and had been doing this thing my whole life. So naturally I like to get better at it. And I just realized that maybe I just wanted to have fun on my snowboard and you, paint. Your arms, you just couldn't even like get them up to paint. I mean, the back I think was so I was gnarly. more just like bummed, mm, you know, if my, yeah, if my mind's not right, I can't paint. And that goes back to the like, I don't have one without the other. If I'm not out having fun and just like maintaining a positive mental state, then my creativity just plummets. Mm -hmm. So there's something really uh, kind of special there. Want to go back to is thinking about you know when you're pursuing a career and you're like, I want to be a snow a pro snowboarder. That is awesome, and anybody should do that that wants to do that. But it also comes with like putting a lot of pressure on yourself. Like, and it, in some ways it can, it can be really fun, but it can also take the fun away from snowboarding. Whereas when you say, no, I'm going to focus on art and then I'm going to have snowboarding as this thing that I do purely for fun. It, I think makes snowboarding more fun. Like having us having the podcast and then going snowboarding, it's, it's not my sole thing that I have to put all my pressure on. I'm having more fun than ever just because I really enjoy it now. hundred percent. That's what I really realized too. I mean, I had met like the best group of girlfriends ever in college also. And it was the first time I had met all these females that also loved, like all they wanted to do was skate and snowboard and like have a good time. And they were all really sick at it, but n none of them really took it super seriously either. So I was in the right friend group of being like, yeah, we, we push it and have fun and like encourage each other. But at the end of the day, we want to be able to do it every day. And that, overrides our desire to be like some like the best snowboarders you know so I totally agree that once I kind of had that mental acknowledgement that my where my priorities were and what my perspective on snowboarding was um that changed a lot of my attitude and I probably ended up snowboarding better technically because I was having more fun yeah no stress you yeah. were just out there having fun yeah and that's when I got a job at Hack Cascade because of those girls, because they had all worked there. Well, that's a perfect segue to get into a guest question from none other than T Mun, aka Tim Eddie. You know what? I think we should give him the super air horn. Yes. Please do. Let's do it. He's the best. The Raj. Shout out to the Raj. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the Raj. Good job, Raj. All right, here we go. T Mun. What is up, world of bomb hole? This is Tim Eddie here. Chris, Ethan, I believe you have my beautiful and wonderful wife in the booth today. And Chris, I know you worked at High Cascade for a while, um, as well as Hannah. And I'm just wondering, Hannah, what was the best part about working at High Cascade? And why was it meeting me? <laughs> so that should be, a, should be an easy one for you. Also... Hannah, if you could give a little insight about the balance between art and snowboarding. And if, if you don't have art, you don't have snowboarding. And if you don't have snowboarding, you don't have art. And how you maintain that balance. All right. Thanks, y'all. Love and respect. Love that guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> me too. <laughs> he called me Ethan. I don't know if he's ever called me that. Yeah, sometimes he'll he'll throw people off and just like bring it OG, you know. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's endearing. <laughs> so I think part one was uh, why what, what, was what was your favorite part of High Cascade and why was it meeting Tim? Yeah. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Um, it was both of our first summer working there. Did you work there before two thousand seven? I think I maybe came, I think I might have started working the same year you guys did. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So, long time ago. A little yeah. love at first sight scenario you know, going on. I mean, what, I what are we talking about? I wish I could say that. It wasn't. But it wasn't. It took all summer. <laughs> it took a long time of him it trying took, really hard. Yeah, he he started like showing up at the lodge for for the best Wi-Fi. Oh, these are air quotes for listeners because the wi <laughs> the Wi-Fi at the lodge was not good. But that's what he was doing, yeah. showing up. Classic like, yeah. doesn't work anywhere scenario. else. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah, because I was a counselor. He was a coach. We were Smooth. on opposite schedules, so we had to make an effort. 
Um, but once we did, I mean, it was great. But we were we were long distance for like two and a half years. But we it's had tough. High Cascade in the summer to look forward to, and we were both so happy and like passionate about what we were doing. Like I had my school and my friends, and he was filming like gone all winter anyway. So camp brought us together. Summer camp romance. Yeah. What role did High Cascade have in shaping? Who you are? Hard hitting question. I mean, a lot of people who sat in this chair have the same experience. Like it was such a special time. I can't even really thank it enough. Like I got hired by Era. Preston was such a huge role model to all of us. Um, my my girlfriends, the Pamelas. Shout out to the Pamelas too. <laughs> you know them. Um. It was also a really cool time for me to be a counselor to a lot of really cool young kids. And I I led art activities, too. So art was a huge part of my time at High Cascade as well. I mean, I painted the ice cream bus, if anybody remembers the uh, bus that would drive the kids up. And we would have, like, art shows. I'd hang up, like, the art activity pieces up in the ice cream bus and stuff. It was just a really fun time to meet so many people. I mean, now it's like so many industry heads were like shithead kids when we were like working there. And it was, I don't know. I can't thank it enough, honestly. All the counselors and coaches are all went on to run brands. And, yeah. and yeah, everyone who finds their way to Mount Hood are the lifers in the community. Not everyone, yeah. but a fair share of them every year. And then you see them again in a job. And right. It's th- so cool. And I, I worked there for like... Tim and I both worked there for seven summers, I think, Oof. and did a lot of different things. Like I was a counselor for three summers, and then I ran Unicorn Food, which was like the food truck that, that High fire. Cascade had. That was super fun. And then Preston was like, hey, Hannah, do you and Tim like want to take over this food truck? Because Unicorn Food had kind of, I don't know, it kind of just was like, had been going for a long time. Maybe it was time to switch it up. And Preston was like, you guys want to? do something with it because tim and i had been doing do you remember we did bake sales at the staff oh, yeah. sale yeah yeah Absolutely. bingo you bongo did bake sales is yeah. That yeah bingo bongo bake sale mm-hmm. is what we, and we would crush it we mm-hmm. made strawberry banana bread i would always cop i would always cop <laughs> dude the hustling that goes things. down at those sales staff man. sale i'm <laughs> telling you i learned a lot it's a, it's a it's a little uh, kickstart for entrepreneurship yeah, when you what, don't have what much. What am I going to sell here What now? can I sell to these people? Yeah. I make $10 I mean, a week, so I better <laughs> sell something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was so fun. Um, Incredible. So Preston had seen that we were, we were cooking food and stuff, so we did Pizza Party. And Pizza Party was the first logo I ever drew, and Ami... Was who also was a huge inspiration oh. for my art. I'm even Ventilion. Yes, I'll let you pronounce say his last interesting name. Interesting attempt at his last name. <laughs> you spe- you said I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> it's like Butalanin, I think. I think yeah, that's, that's right. good. That's Dude, that was good. good. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. But he's, I mean, legendary. Like he did all the High Cascade art logos, like the marshmallow, do, like iconic. All of Crab Grabs logos. All too, of right? Crab Grabs stuff. Like still does a bunch for. He yeah. still. I forget who he's working for now. I could be he, wrong about all, but I know Preston does some of that too. I shouldn't yeah. say it. But. Yeah. He's still going strong out there. You know there. what, though? I'm actually going to actively not give Preston an air horn because <laughs> oh, the he hasn't been calling yeah. me back. He's been keeping me on. He's, he's been basically surfing blocked too much. my number. He's Good for him, much. though, yeah. you know? Good for him. Set boundaries. Yeah, set, boundaries so are just important. again, we're not going to give Preston an air horn. No air horn. Show. I'm going to give you one. Beep, 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 beep. That's nope. for Preston. This is what I got for Preston. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Damn, drama over here. Hey. Grindies, we're floating on a rock in space. It's true. You're right. Okay, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Um, Yeah, so Ami helped me vector, which I didn't even know. I was like, what on earth are you talking about? Um, Which is how you like computerize a drawing. You didn't know how to turn your work to pixels. Exactly. Well, I knew how to turn it to pixels. I didn't know how to turn it to vectors. Yeah, lines. Gotcha. Exactly. Um, So yeah, Ami was a huge help then, and I just was... I mean, still admire his art for sure. Um, so yeah, we we slanged pizzas to the kids. Grilled pizza it was really fun. Um, Spent a lot of my wages at pizza pizza party when I was working there too. Nice. Yeah, a lot we of did my hard like earned wages. ten dollars a week or a day or whatever it was. <laughs> it was better than that, but um, 
Yeah, we did like all organic. Like we went to the farmer's market in Portland and brought food up every week and did like farmer's market topping pizzas and stuff like trying to get some good food up there. Because yeah, those kids, they're eating some gnarly stuff at those camps. Yeah. That What's that brand? Cisco. That, yeah, that Cisco What's everything. Cisco? But so you're saving Cobra lives Dogs up there. Cobra Dogs was sick. Oh, yeah, Cobra Dogs. Absolutely. And we would do Still specials. Is. We would do specials with Cobra Dogs and Volcano Cones. Like some kids would bring. Like, Collabs. Yeah. Some kids would bring like a raw dog to pizza party and then we would like wrap it up in a pizza <laughs> or we would grill our cookies and then they'd bring them over like warm cookies to Volcano Cones and <laughs> it was fun. It was a good time. What a great era in life. And there's something to, I may have said this before, I fucking repeat myself all the time. It was just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, pretty, I don't even know what we say. I just don't even know what we say. <laughs> we do on episode 7 million. Yeah. But, you know, working with kids is awesome because in snowboarding, it's kind of cool to like, you know, smoke weed, not give a shit, get drunk. And like, which, you know, sometimes it's maybe coaches or something maybe did after hours or maybe they didn't. But but uh, when you're when you're around those kids, like you, you're like, I want to be a good role. Like Preston would really like he would be a good like dad because he'd just be like, hey, man, like you, you got to like behave in a certain way around these kids. And, and it, I would say that for in my experiences, it made me. A better person and made especially as a counselor because you're interacting with them every single day you know for sure it you know all that stuff yeah and I think combining for me as a counselor like combining my love of snowboarding and art and being able to share it with kids that were hyped and if you're excited if you're excited and like confident about what you're doing then people will that will resonate with people and it that can go for anything but especially for kids and like I mean, I'm still friends with some of my campers. Like, Kelsey Boyer was a camper, and, like, Jackson Fowler and Jesse Gouveia. Like, so many people that I was, like, felt like they were children, and now I feel like we're the same age. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And that positive feeling is infectious, right? Yeah, totally. And, like, it was really hard at times, too. I mean, I was Hondo's intern my first summer, Wow. And he would just make me do so much stuff. Love the guy. He, it was, he, uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> I had to clean the bathrooms of the lodge at like midnight after just all day, you know. But you're at High Cascade. Well, it's like the best place ever. And you've done a good job of, what, what's good about camp when you work there is your your life is just simple. You, yeah. What do I got to do? Well, I'm going to like make sure these kids are surviving and okay. And then I'm going to snowboard all day and maybe make some art. And that that's really it. My food's taken care of. Lodging's taken care of. Like, life's yeah. pretty easy. And you're around kids. And so you're it's fun and light and childish and infectious. And it's really cool to see how, as your life has evolved, you've still kept that lighthearted playfulness about your mantra in life. It's, it's not the same for sometimes people graduate from High Cascade, go on and all of a sudden they're full blown like like boring adults and you've done a great job of like keeping that going. I mean also bringing it back to my favorite part meeting Tim Eddy. <laughs> he meeting him was like so refreshing because I learned pretty much then through him that like you could be amazing at snowboarding and like making a thing out of it and be having the most fun still. So that was super inspiring. And like, not only had my mentality changed just before that by getting injured, but then I met Tim. So it was like, all of that was kind of culminating where I was like, oh yeah, snowboarding is just fun. And then I had met like so many people through High Cascade, like Jesse from Air Blaster started asking me for like little drawings and stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. So I can like turn this community of snowboarding into where I start my art career, really. So Now, around that point in time, it seems like, is that when you and and Tim started doing the the tiny home? Yeah, yeah. So we, after we did, like, the long distance finishing school and stuff, um, we lived in Tahoe and built a little cabin off the grid and lived just, like, super sustainably how we pictured just like what our perfect version of being environmentally living on the planet, you know, like caring about the planet. 
because that's when we were just really, you know, we were getting old, like growing up and seeing all the fucked up shit in the world. And we're like, what can we do as individuals? Like, what's our best version? So being as sustainable as we could and like solar, just full compost toilet. Like we had to put in a well as a rule that basically this is a tool dude story. And we're gonna we gotta let him tell this Tim story. Tim will tell the, the full yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let we'll let Tim tell the story. But I was like, I learned so much. We both learned so much. My parents helped us build the cabin, and like, we just made it happen. And that kind of goes to just being like, hey, we only have this one life. Like, what's our best version, and what kind of stuff do we want to try and just see and put it out there? And we it's like up to us to make those calls. You know, like format your life into something that you're stoked on and in addition to just add to that to people that don't know you had a skateboard park there like a bowl so yeah we did build a concrete bowl i mean we're homies with skate park builders so it was not like a diy project we had like dudes who know what they're doing come out which was amazing and it turned out super sick i mean we spent more time and money on the bowl than we did on the house basically (laughs) it was way bigger than our house was yes well i have a question because i think it's a fantasy of a lot of people to live off the grid and be on solar and build a tiny home there's so many people that you talk to that that's what they want to do especially like with a skate bowl like right you guys you guys did what is a lot of people's dreams and so how how did that pan out as expectation versus reality? And what, like, what did you learn from that living experience? Yeah, we I learned so much living like that. A, it was really hard to let myself make art because when you're just living completely sustainably, every little like extra thing you just feel bad about. So I was like, I can't just like buy paint and like paint on this thing. Like that's just more shit in the world. So I... I was going through a mental battle on that, which was good to think about. It's like always good to be conscious of your decisions, but it was really hindering my life and realizing that like me making art is not going to like me not making art isn't going to save the world. I mean, making art isn't going to save the world, but what makes me happier is making art. So I could probably have a bigger impact and it turns out, I feel like I have had a bigger impact by making the art rather than not. That also ties into it's not just individual actions for the planet. And we were taking like burdens of the world onto our shoulders and being like, well, we if we don't poop in this bucket, you know, who it, you know, just being like if we're not composting our everything and doing everything right like we're blowing it. You were putting the world on your backs. Yeah, and we were like 24. You know, it was like a c- cool time to be like, yeah, we got this. You know, we we're like super fired up. But then as you get older and like realize the bureaucracy of stuff, which what we were doing was not legal. We built under 200 square feet as an accessory structure to a air quote real house that we were planning to build, which we knew we were never building. So... Just knowing that living sustainably like that wasn't even legal, let alone really making that much a difference. Like, yeah, it could inspire some people to, like, think about where they're getting their food or how much water they're using. But collectively, we can make a bigger impact. So that was a huge learning experience. And a lot of the reason why we stopped doing it, A, it not being legal and us not wanting to build a, a real permitted house B, we were kind of just like slaves to our jobs too like tim was doing construction in the summers and i was doing pastry because after pizza party i was like oh cool i'll go into food as like my artistic outlet um but we were just working too much to try to like save money for a potential real house and we just had to take a step back and reevaluate which is what we tend to do a lot that's that's something very, very inspiring. And just on a broader level, when I look at you guys, you guys have engineered your life in order to be able to do what you want, when you want, and put a lot of of time and effort into the things that you love. And I think 
societally, we, we have grandiose visions of doing that, but we get tied down by our jobs. You got to work in nine to five. I, I've struggled with this in my own life. And I'm really fascinated on what you guys did to really tactfully and thoughtfully engineer your life to set it up so you can just dive in and create art full time. Yeah, so it's kind of an ever going process. I would, this is where I would say that having a husband and a partner that's like insanely supportive and we're best friends and going through life with someone that you trust and just knows you so well and you have so much fun. Like, we just love like trying to plan the best version of what we could be doing. So, a lot of times we'll see. We know each other so well. I mean, we met when we were 20 and we'll see, we'll, Tim will see me kind of like not being in my groove and he'll be the first person to be like, hey, what do we need to do? So after the cabin, we moved to Portland as kind of like, a, all right, let's switch it up. Let's move to an art city where like Hannah has more opportunities and Tim was doing air blaster stuff and we we're like, okay, let's kind of switch it up. But it turns out that I was working way too much in Portland at a really rad bakery, but I was not inspired to make art. I wasn't snowboard. I barely snowboarded that winter and that just wasn't it, you know? So that was a quick, like, okay, tested that. That's not working. Um, but while we were in Portland, I got like my first big art collab gig and that was, to kind because of Colleen Quigley, air horn. And that was kind of towards the end of our time at Portland um, or living in Portland. And it made me really be like, okay, I think I could do this, but I've got a lot to learn, A, because I got to go into to kind and like see how all the things were getting made and stuff. And it was like, really cool to be involved in the process and it just fired me up on really learning like I need to learn illustrator I need to learn how to really do my stuff the way that I picture it being so our move to Reno was a way for us to have a low overhead we got a house that had a rental and we just like kind of chipped away at setting up to where I could just be like all right let's just do this art thing full time and dive into it but it took a long time to set that up. And like, we were intentional in our decisions on the way there, but it's not, a, it's not easy. But it's up to you to be like, okay, is there a way where you can set up your life to have time to do the things that you really want to do and dive in and be like, this is what I want to do. And that, that word you just said, dive in, talking to Tim, he, he kind of painted a picture to me that, that really makes a lot of sense is that Art to you is this big thing that you would put on a pedestal that, you know, you're working at a bakery. Maybe you can do it as a career, just maybe, but it's scary and it's daunting and, and it's this like unachievable thing. And that move to Reno was the, okay, fuck it. I'm going to be an artist and I'm going to build my life to set up myself so I have the free time to do that. And I'm going to do that by having living in a, a very humble means where we rent out another part of our house to pay for where we live and we have disposable income in that way. And, and that's super inspiring. Yeah. And that also, I was kind of like side hustling my art for a long time where like people didn't really know that. I wasn't really putting it out there, but I was doing like logos here and there and like band gig posters and stuff like that. And it was really fun. But it was that thing where I'm like, I, I'm afraid to fully just jump into this because if it doesn't work, like what's my dream next, you know? Like this has been something that I've been thinking about for so long. And yeah, we live in the garage and I made myself do a hundred days of art. And that's when I was like, all right, I'm just gonna say I'm an artist. I had never done that in my whole life. And I was like, I'm saying I'm an artist and I'm going to let everybody know. And in the meantime of these hundred days, I'm going to teach myself how to use like the Adobe Creative Suite and like know what I'm doing if I get a gig out of this. So every day I woke up and I became so 
inspired and like I couldn't wait to get up in the morning to like pour some coffee and just draw whatever I was going to draw that day I never had like really a plan for the 100 days so it was really loose and open but I would share it on social media every day and kind of use that social media as a tool for myself really as a way to put stuff out into the world and to force myself to be accountable and I think that's a like that's when I really realized that like yeah you can be good at stuff but if you don't put in the work and you don't show up every day like it's probably not going to work out and whatever that means for you is different it could be just something easy like just telling yourself you're something or actually like putting pen to paper and making it happen so, so you basically yeah. manifested it I, I kind of like, manifested And I don't want to say fake it till you make it because you didn't fake it, but you like manifested it every day. This is what I am. And yeah. you put in the work. Yeah. yeah. And in the meantime of the 100 days, I was getting more gigs. Like, um, because I am an artist. Because I am an artist. And, yeah. and I'm putting it out there. And like that resonates so much with people. Like you guys being like, we have a podcast. Here it is. Like, if of like we're we just like we're, of, we're, we're putting we, a podcast out every Wednesday. Yeah. That's right. what we said, right? right. We, Same deal. We could have been like, "Hey, do you want to do a podcast?" You can talk about it forever yeah. and like dabble and like do little versions of it or whatever. But until you tell the world and yourself that you are something, it's probably not gonna not gonna happen. For a hundred days, did you put a fresh piece on the gram? Then yeah, beautiful. Yeah, but I did. I took like a break in the middle because that's when we went on the absinthe tour with. Easy Giant Bant played some music along with the Absence Sick. movie. Couldn't say no to that. I have a quick Patreon. Yeah. From Johnny Mandeal. It seems like you and Tim have a pretty successful relationship. Do you have any secrets or advice for a long, happy marriage? Thank you for the question. I agree. <laughs> um, I think that the biggest thing is communication and like being honest with yourself. You know, if you trust what you're putting out, then you trust what the other person's putting out. And just talk, like, we're all just trying our best and not assuming that someone's, like, trying to bring you down or something. Like, we can go so easily spiraled in our brains of being like, this person means this when they said this. But if you just trust yourself and the person that you've chosen to be with, you can work through a lot of stuff because nothing real can be threatened. So like if you're at the base, love this person and want to be with them, like then the rest is just bullshit. Like you don't have to listen to all that other stuff. Like at the end of the day, we're so lucky to have these amazing people in our lives. And if you have chosen each other to spend time with, then like cherish that and make it worthwhile. You're not going to look back and wish that you hadn't been honest and open with someone. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. And you guys are definitely goals when you look at relationships. When I look at you guys from afar, see, it's like you guys are always, you know, you're going mountain biking, you're split boarding. You did that book like pow and chow <laughs> where you guys are like sleeping in a, in a, uh, RV and, split boarding and cooking food and yeah. doing cool shit. And it's like, obviously like for you guys, not for everybody, but like activities seem like a huge deal for you guys. Right. Yeah. Because we are both so into the things that we love and we are lucky. Like I have a hard time cause I can't assume that everyone's going to be as lucky as like meeting your best friend. And we do almost everything together and we have so much fun and that definitely helps. But it's been cool, you know, like, as I pursue my art career more, I am going off and, like, doing my own thing. And Tim helps me on murals and stuff, which is so fun. But it's not his shit, and that's great. Like, and, you know, he's been getting more into mountain biking than I am. You know, like, and we just, you just have to let the person do their thing. I mean, we're also both, like, I'm his biggest fan, and he's my biggest fan. So I just want to see him succeed and I know he feels the same. So when we are having fun together, it's like the best thing ever. But when he's off doing something that I know he's really psyched on, like I couldn't be happier mm -hmm. either. So he mentioned something super interesting when I was talking to him about how when you really made the transition into being an artist, 
you were like, well, I don't think I'm going to snowboard today. I'm, I'm going to stay home and paint. And he's like, really? Like, you want to paint? You know, and then obviously understood and, and supported you and all those things. Uh, but he, he also mentioned uh, he was really, he's like, the world needs to know her process. Like, they need to know her process because I watch it and it's crazy and she loses track of time. And like, if I don't feed her, I don't even know what would happen. And like, <laughs> it's ba- true. basically, it's true. he's like, it's wild because like, I'm one of the only people that sees it, but the world needs to know her process. He's going to bring food in or you're just oh not my, even going to eat. Literally, <laughs> like, he'll be like, Hannah. What do you, you know need, what time it is? Yeah, <laughs> like here's a PB and J for God's sakes, like you're gonna die. Um, yeah, sometimes I get so in the zone and I just can't even I don't even know where I'm at. Sometimes it's like the madness, like when you're trying to land a trick. I get like that with painting too, where I'm just like I get so I'm like, why is this not working? Like it's not looking how I want, but that part is so fun, and you just like hate yourself for a minute and you've worked through like all this shit is like going to therapy in a canvas and then sometimes it's super fun and easy and I can be like talking to Tim while I'm painting and other times I'm like no one can come near me which is cool to see like what the outcome I mean I have a pretty consistent style so the outcome is generally similar but I can look at a painting and be like oh that was a tough one or that one was a breeze but yeah, I lose track of time. I mean, if you have something in your life that you don't know what time it is and days fly by and you're just so in the flow state, like, do that. Keep doing that because it's insane. It's so cool. You know who said that yeah. exact same thing? It's Tre- Trevor Andrew. <laughs> yeah, and look at you two guys, man. You guys thing. like, yeah. it's like they're, they're, if it's been said by Trevor and, and it's said by you, like, there's obviously... A, yeah, but it's so true. When you when you lose track of time and you're just lost Something in what you're happening. doing, your life's good. Right? Yeah. Do you like get that? State. Do you get that uh, clip high that he gets? Oh and, God, yeah. But you get the canvas high, huh? Yeah, the, the art high. It's on the paint fumes though. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, not yeah, paint. yeah. It's that's not the an fume. actual. That's yeah. the fume. I got them confused. Huh? <laughs> Huffing paint and yeah. actual making a dope piece. <laughs> it helps. It goes. Hand or you in mix hand. them. Yeah. Then it's the ultimate. Yeah. But yeah, you're you. I mean. You finish a painting and it feels really good, and then you're like, "Okay, what's the next one?" Because I can do it better. You know, you're always just fiending for Chris, the next one. Chris, you must one. have felt that a little bit when you created this yeah. masterpiece. Yeah, so I'm, I'm know, guessing. I, I'll just throw this yeah. on the screen. But this is the masterpiece, slightly better than Hannah's. Yeah, uh, slightly. It's a, it's a portrait of Stony Bud. But I'll, I'll tell you what. When I, I noticed how my lips looked. Yeah, yeah last the lips night. are. It's kind of dope. Nice. Yep. yep. So it was one of those things, though. Like Pink straight lip. up. Look, I get. I look. I look at it right now. I'm like. That's fucking. That's dope. That's you know? dope. Yeah, so, it is dope. Like that's. I look like, like a South Park character. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's nice when it's not on like a screen. It's like a. Oh, I can hold this. Or I can look at it. Speaking it's on the of wall. though, that reminds me. I do have something for you guys. Oh, we got Woo! gifts. Yeah, I know you were like you were all excited about me painting last night, and you wanted to hang it on the wall, but I painted you guys something else. Holy smoke! What? Oh my god! That is dope. This is unreal. Look at that gradient background. Holy smokes! It's a little. Explain what it is for the listeners. What we got here? People that can't see it. It's incredible. This is a bomb. I did. I had the pleasure of making a bomb hole T-shirt like last year, maybe, and I wanted to, you know, commemorate that and do an original bomb painting. He's fallen out of the sky, about to just. Scorp into a big old bomb hole. <laughs> Scorp into a bomb hole. <laughs> yeah. Scorp to bomb hole. Those are the best because then your head is first. <laughs> Dude, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. I like that he's wearing sunglasses yeah, too. You know, he's, he's kind of got a loose vibe, and tongue out. He's going so fast. Yep, his arms are on fire. He actually caught on fire on the way in. Yeah. Dude. So that's an a- acrylic painting with a spray paint gradient. I was going to say, I can smell the spray paint. Yeah. It's still that's how you get so that fresh. gradient, huh? Yeah. That's insane. So this is a mixed medium a mixed going on yep, here, huh? Yep, I like to find a home for this combine thing, them. Huh? Well, ding, thank ding. you, thank you so much for bringing that gift to us. And I think it's that's something really cool. It can bring lead us into a wormhole of your your art style because it's so it's so playful and fun. Some people do very realistic portraits or oil yeah. paintings, but yours are are like they're just fun. I don't know how else to describe them. How would you well, describe your style? So yeah, for the listeners also. Um, I love clean, bold line work, vibrant colors, expressive characters, imaginative landscapes, and a lot of times I mix that with hand lettering and typography. Um, 
But the way I kind of came back to this style, you know, life takes twists and turns. And I was painting a lot of landscapes after college, thinking that that's what people wanted to see. But I just didn't connect with them as much. So during those 100 days, I kind of was like, oh, yeah, the things that I'm the most excited to paint and draw are the things that like I'm like laughing while I'm doing it or I'm just like what am I drawing kind of back to my mom's reactions of like what is in your brain like that's so fun for me and why not do the stuff that's fun that like I'm putting myself into the work more I feel more connected to this work um the female characters that are really popping up in my my work lately more and more and I want to keep pushing that um, is because now I have this platform and I have the opportunity to represent more different shapes and sizes and colors and whatever type of person it is, more females. I didn't have that much to look up to and now I have the opportunity to incorporate them in my work. So I get to put, put myself in my work. Like that's what I resonate with the most and that tends to come off better more authentically me well this is a perfect time you have a behind your head the pe the female skateboarding oh, yeah yeah and it says keep pushing forward yes right and and uh it's such a such an incredible piece and it's like kind of obviously like a double a double meaning like you, you want to explain about that one yeah so i like to talk about heavy topics through a lighthearted lens and um ultimately i'd love for my art to leave you a sense of like hope and connection and there's so much doom and gloom in the world and so much happening that for myself mentally I like to make art that kind of goes against that and I can use my art to promote positivity and community and connection so why not especially with like you know the this Keep Pushing Forward was a print that I did after a bunch of the BLM movement stuff. Like social media, you know, that's a whole can of worms that we don't have to get into. But I was using that platform for positivity and it helped me put out the stuff that I wanted to put out and kind of like counteract all the crazy shit that is going on. The, the ethos is, is really like important to talk about too because there's there's obviously really bad shit going on in the world right. we could all agree on that and mm -hmm. it's it, and it's oftentimes maybe the problem with social media is is really pointing fingers at people and pointing fingers at the bad shit that's going on but inversely you can be combating that by saying hey here's a good thing we can do here's hopeful stuff here's what's awesome and i think that that's like instead of negative art the like you said the positive inspiring lighthearted art like I, I could have a list of some that I, I wrote down that we can kind of get into each yeah. one but you know in like be wise empathize such a simple slogan and you have your art above it it's amazing find meeting in the mess you know it's uh, life's like it's messy but find meeting in the mess right keep pushing forward tell your friends you love them I like these ones it's all temporary Find unity and community. You know, all these th these th this messaging is it's it's all positive in in a, a negative space, and I think that's really powerful. Yeah, it's it's really helpful for me to work through those concepts also. And you know, a lot of the phrases that I use are can be ambiguous, and you know, I like that people can take them in different directions, and a lot of them, you know, like. I'm dancing a line mentally of like live, laugh, love versus like shit I think is cool. You yeah, know? totally. Like, yeah, that's a great. Yeah. So it's all about balance. Like my brain can go dark and like do some weird shit. So there's naturally going to be that in my art. Like there's a lot of skulls and, and flames and like things that you actually find. And it's this like juxtaposition of these nice like fun characters but they're all connected with these things that are real and like kind of like looming that's why a lot of times I'll do like these characters coming out of the girl's hair and stuff and like it's kind of like 
either a looming feeling or it's an inner child. Like it can go either way where it's like this positive thing is lurking or it's this negative thing is lurking. But life is all about balance. And I mean, I think that's probably like the theme of what we're talking about today, like finding the things that keep you grounded and balanced and in the moment. And, you know, we can be real about all the crazy shit that's going on, but we can also be really thankful for all the really good stuff. So it's all about balance and perspective. Is that piece in print somewhere? Or did I just see it on the gram? Because I know I've seen that before. Which what? one? The one behind you there with the keep pushing forward. It's literally in print, like behind you. No, Lit- no, in like <laughs> oh, before. Oh, that. in a magazine. Yeah, in a magazine. Oh, okay. Like slush or something? Maybe. No. I swear um, I've, I've seen it, it somewhere. It might have got. I can't remember. I'd, I'd, like, to, maybe I'd, on your I'd like to have too. you you elaborate on some of these. Um, just kind of maybe yeah. maybe give a synopsis because I think they're they're powerful. So let's just start with the first one. Be wise, empathize. I mean, empathy goes a long way. If we all were a little more empathetic, we probably wouldn't have half the problems that we have in the world. So it's like the smartest thing you can do is to just put yourself in someone else's shoes. But then like the art that goes along with that is like kind of weird. And if you look into it more, there's this like weird snake and like kind of creepy stuff, but she's just like grooving, you know, like, and I think there's always more that you can look into, which I think is really fun about having phrases with art is you can look at it one day and it means something else that it did the other day. You know? It's open for interpretation. Yeah. Okay, next one, uh, especially in the climate of everything happening in our world, but uh, find meaning in the mess. Yeah, I mean, that's just it right there, honestly. I think if I were to have a motto besides we're floating on a rock in space and no one knows what the fuck's happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> find that's, that's your personal mission yeah, statement. Yeah, have you painted it. that one up? No, but there's a lot of sketches of it, but I think because it is Mm -hmm. so much of what I believe in, like it's hard for me to nail down like what the art for that is, you know? Um, Maybe I should do a series that's just like a bunch of different ones. Um, But yeah, find something that like gets you out of bed in the morning. It doesn't have to be crazy, like impactful anything. It can just be some sort of meaning, some little twinkle of hope in all this bullshit that's what that one is great uh you kind of touched on keep pushing forward um i kind of i guess the last two i'd like to talk about are it's all temporary we'll start with that one yeah that one's just like life you know we only have right now own your moment just do shit that feels good and we're a blip or a blip. It doesn't matter if Preston hasn't called you back. And, and also, <laughs> and also live, laugh, love. Okay. Also live, laugh, love. And then the last one, I think this one's powerful, but find unity in community. Yeah, that one's cool because that one actually, well, I'm going to shout out Changing Tides Foundation. They're an ocean conservancy nonprofit run by a bunch of women surfers down in Encinitas. Um, Leah Dawson, Alo's lady, um, is one of the main girls, but I've gotten to do some stuff with them, and that's, like, their slogan. So that was a fundraising project for them. But, I mean, community is everything. That's why we're here. I, I owe everything to the community that we've built, and you got to you gotta cherish that. You totally. Know? And, and even, like, a little subtle sidebar of that, it's like, together we're strong and divided – we're weak. Right. So that's that's like, you know, as it pertains to us as a community on multi- many levels. We're going to take a second and talk to you guys about a new snack we've been snashing here in the bomb hole called Hippies. Did you say snashing or smashing? Smashing, snacking, snacking, smashing. Yeah, they're delicious. The good thing about these uh, chips, they're healthy. Yeah, A lot of times you get, you get a healthy chip, it's like chewing on a piece of cardboard or bark. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's cardboard or a chip sometimes, and I... These not, things, not though, you it. might you might think it's the best chip you've ever had in your life. And the good thing about it is it's gluten-free, it's vegan or plant-based, and this is a huge one for health purposes, non-GMO. So hippies, uh, if you're looking to get a healthy alternative to a snack, get some hippies chips. They love snowboarding. They support the podcast, so you should support them. And head on over to hippies.com. 
and use promo code BOMBHOLE20, all capitals. Again, BOMBHOLE20 for 20% off. They're also available in most grocery stores. All right, buds, you know what it's time for? Name that video part. Name That Video Part is presented by Mammoth Mountain. Uh, Mammoth, one of the best mountains in North America. You might catch buds in the mini pipe going Switch McTwist. Going you think, huge. Are we going to dust off the Switch Mickey this We're year? We're going to dust it. Okay. Start We're, with an airbag maybe and uh, work my way into the well, snow. Well, they, they have those there in the spring. Let's uh, go. Might just be for U.S. team, but they got everything all the I'm way from, from beginner park setup all the way to the biggest jumps you'll find in North America. And in addition to that, if it snows... Great get, terrain. Great terrain. A lot of just good groomers. If you want to, if you're just a carve dogger, you want to whack some turns. Huge mountain. Huge mountain. Hence the name Mammoth. It's a mammoth of a mountain right there. So if you're interested in a fun snowboard vacation, check out Mammoth Mountain. They support the show. They kick ass. Thank you, Mammoth. All right. Name that video part. Let's get into it. How's your confidence level? Zero through ten. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> great answer. All right. Well, let's see how you do. Okay, that's a lob. That's team money. Neil Proto. That is a lob. And it, and it is your your uh, husband, uh, Neo Proto Blue Box. That's uh, No, it's not my husband. That's team money. That, <laughs> <laughs> that was when he was team money. Yeah, that's different. If you had different... got that, you would have gotten in trouble, huh? Yeah, I would have gotten in trouble. Yeah, that that was bad. probably the Sleeping only... Sleeping on the couch. Yeah, that's the only video part I would have ever gotten. I you, mean, he's beatboxing his part. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing. He beatbox his own part. He's a very different Tim than we know now. And I actually told Tim when he comes on, um, we haven't scheduled it yet, but when he does, there will be a day. I said in that part he does a back lip pretzel, and we used to watch that religiously. I said, you know, we're gonna come on, we're gonna do a, a, a three hour podcast about two and a half of those hours. We're gonna talk about that back lip pretzel. <laughs> you just watched that. Huh? We're that just gonna your... loop it and really discuss the back lip pretzel. I mean, the funny part is I was watching those movies too, but. I was also probably drawing at the same time, so I didn't catch anybody's names, or it was kind of just like a background thing. Well, with the beatbox, it, it has to stick out. I mean, let's be honest, also, a 15-year-old Hannah saw that, I would have been like, damn, who's that? <laughs> damn, that's fire. <laughs> that's fire. All right, we're going to get into part two of Name That Video Part. This is for the listeners. Uh, if you know the part, when this episode comes out, you we pick our winners on the Instagram. On the Instagram. What are we fucking boomers over here? <laughs> and uh, it'll be on the picture of Hannah's face, the thumbnail photo. Leave your comment there, and and you might get a little prize pack. Here we go. <laughs> That is a banger female part. There's a little breadcrumb for you. Damn, uh, I don't even know that one. Well, uh, okay. Take you a guess. <laughs> Take a guess. No, I wasn't going to guess, but I was going to do something else. Well, let me let me yeah, do the outro that's song. What I was wait, let wait, you wait. Do. We forgot a prize pack. Well, we're a little out of order, but yeah, we Yeah, I was going to say okay. I was going to say where's my prize pack? <laughs> <laughs> I was We but. we have forgotten to give uh people their prize pack. But Damn. what you have here is the Yeti tote. Wow. Uh, no, it's a carry all actually, technically. This is it's filled with bomb hole legit. merch. Legit. Yep. We got hoodies, sweatpants. I threw an extra hat in there for T Mon. Okay. Um, he's gonna need it in the Raj. Yeah, he's gonna be using Thanks, that in the Raj. Guys, fun. I almost was gonna put some power tools in there for T Mon as well. <laughs> Wait, but I, is this going on the truck? Yeah, oh, Tim? yeah. Listen to think? the bomb hole. We got license plate covers. Sick. Thanks, yeah. guys. You could you could actually scratch it out and you could write listen to my bomb hole. <laughs> and right, and then have it. my face. Yeah, and then put your yeah. face on That'll your be license tight. plate. Okay, so I got part three of name that video part. We like okay. that. You guys. Here we go. But it's name that artist. Okay, name that how video guys, art. Yeah, what do you guys uh, scale of one to ten? How confident are you on naming the artist who did a snowboard graphic? Eleven. A graphic. Eleven out of ten. I'm a uh, twelve out of ten. Damn. All right, you guys. Here we go. Wow, she brought her own iPad. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, buds, this is for you. Wow, this is great. This is a Danny Cass oh, canoe. 
Uh, I don't know. You got it, Chris? I know it is. It's uh, begins with a P. It's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, I want to say Pensiero, but it's not. It's like it's that. It's so close. It's like Pensiero, but uh, uh, I'm not up on my GNU art. This uh, is OG, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pens- yeah it's OG. very similar to Pensiero. Give me a. Let- Pin- Pinsky. Pins- yeah. Yes, Pinsky. Oh, Pinsky. 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 I so should have known. That's that a was win, Pinsky. right? Yeah, I, I, give me yeah, that's yeah. Pinsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that. I'm counting yeah, that. Yeah. That's a win. Tim Karpinski. Yeah, Tim Karpinski. Tim yeah. Karpinski. I should have guessed Legendary. that. Legendary. I've seen his yeah, art. That's a Danny so Cass long. board, right? It's a Danny Cass. Yep. 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 He did nice. most of Danny's stuff. He did. That's why I thought maybe. I should have known that. It's okay. I haven't seen his stuff in so long. We'll let it slide. All right. Talented dude, though. Very talented dude. I've gotten to work with him. It's great. Um, this good, is a fun game. I'm having fun. It's a great yeah. game. Okay, we got one more. You guys can kind of work work on it as a team, but this is a newer newer graphic, but... Jake Kuzik. Yeah, but who did the art? Oh. <laughs> he's not even the pro yeah, model. He's, he's, his brain is in snowboarding. It's fine. Kennedy. Nope. I'm just throwing names uh, out. <laughs> Jake Kuzik board. Who did the art? Shoot. I'm just not up on my K2. I mean, uh, that looks okay, like... Okay. I have no... I want to say like... Uh, He's done a lot in skating too. Oh, not snap. Gons. No, nope. obviously. I almost gave you guys a Gons, but I thought it'd be too easy. He's done a lot in skating. Here, look. Zoom in. Oh, Sieben. Uh, uh close. Sna- I mean, let me see. Sa- yeah. It's not Sieben. He's uh, sick too. Oh, is it Roger? That's Roger Skateboards. That's same Sibin. guy. Yeah, Sieben. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he does another skateboard company, transportation unit. Shit, I don't know. He's coaster. I mean, he lives on the East Coast now. Russ Pope. Russ oh, Pope. Russ Pope. Okay, I'm you know what? I'm with Russ Pope. Yeah, Russ is the man. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm going to give myself a gunshot for that. You do. I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I'm i really sorry. Well, you guys still both won Hannah as Eddie prize packs. We got prize packs. Wow, we got prize packs. Let's do some. Okay, okay. You can't so, we got Hydro Flask. Wow. Lunch boxes. Wow. Filled with some goodies. Wow. We got prize packs, bud. This, this is, is fun. Awesome. This is fun. I've got other sizes of shirts if you guys. We got a hand Eddie prize pack. I can't remember. That one might be for East on that shirt, but oh, you did we a got slow tide towels okay. with Pangea Seed Foundation. Yep. Skull candy headphones. Yep. That'll be great. I can listen with, to. With some. Some. some the baby on there. Right? We got sure. a, What kind of tea we got here? That one I think is for East Stone. Okay, you, let's switch them. I think the size is. Yep. Switch it. Oh, oh man. Yeah, no, you got two towels. <laughs> I want to let all can the rest my, of the guests know. Can I have my know? towel, please? All the rest of the guests that don't bring us stuff are now Well, this is size large. It. I think this is Chris's. Okay, maybe it is. Okay, here. We'll clean it back. Okay. Don't, don't knock it on the... It doesn't room. matter. I got more I got more shirts if you guys want. I want to let everybody else know that doesn't bring us stuff that they're yeah. bringing it. People need to know, you know, it makes such a better show if stuff's just brought Yeah, you got to, like, I mean, sweeten the deal it, a little, right? This warms so, my heart. This warms my heart. There's so much cool yeah, stuff in here. Koozies. What are we going to do with all this cool stuff, bud? Sell it. <laughs> that, that's, uh, you, you, you'll be able to find buds at Milo Pro Sale. Yeah, sell it. <laughs> you'll be able to see all these items at Milo Pro Sale next fall. Can you sign this? <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say it, dude. <laughs> No, this it's is fair a, game. You can do whatever that, you no, want. No, I would not do that. That's just a joke that Chris no, and I like to dude, talk it's about. Fine. It's not really a joke Something like when this, everything ends up this there. Would Something end like up this would end up there. Yeah. Um, this is dope. Wow, thank you. Dope I mean, that, you know what that did? That kind of warmed, that warmed my heart a little bit. Me too, man. All right, I'm going to ask a personal question Kay. because I struggle with this in my own life. Um, creating art requires focus. Mm. And we're in a world of distraction. How do you battle all the distractions of this modern era we're living in? There's a lot of distractions, but you just need to find balance, you know? Like, if something's just not working, I you, t- forcing things is not good. So if you'd rather watch a movie, watch a movie. And don't be so hard on yourself. I think we're so caught up in, like, you got to be, like, on your A game all the time, like, doing all this important shit, and you're seeing what looks like everybody else out there killing it. So we're harder on ourselves and being like, oh, I'm not I'm not living up to my potential. But if you're just trying, 
it's okay to get a little distracted. But if you're finding yourself just never getting through anything that you're trying to do, like go for a walk and then come back and like reconnect with what's important. Like find your perspective of your place in the world. Like I'll just go outside and be like, oh yeah, what matters? Like I don't need to be looking on my phone all the time or whatever. Um, But yeah, it's not easy. I struggle with it too. Um, but when I'm doing stuff that I love to do, it tends to be less of an issue. That's amazing. I'll tell you what, when I'm editing photos, I don't know if this happens to you. If you're not in the mood and you can't oh. force it, I'll find myself like doing anything, anything, but not like I'll start painting or something, a wall or installing a shelf somewhere. And it's like, yeah, I'm not even good at that stuff and I should never do it, but anything not to yeah. edit. Cause I, just I mean, I'll do mood. that too. Forcing stuff is just so hard. <laughs> like it just it, never right? turns out right. Especially in creative aspects like snowboarding too like if you're trying to force something like you're probably gonna get hurt so just i don't know keep trying to find the stuff that you're not distracted doing Mm -hmm. but also there's like everyday shit we all have to do yeah you have to do some things let's be and when you're in the right mood it comes fast right yeah totally and sometimes you're just off and that's okay my biggest battle i've realized is just like really anything with a screen is yeah. going to deter me, whether like there's a football game on on my TV or I'm scrolling oh, on just my like phone. I'm over. like, I, I'll be like, you know, you, certain things like for me, like my well, creative outlet might be going and like changing my oil in my dirt bike and turning some screws, right? Like that's like things that that I I do that get me in that space that you're talking about. But I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna do an oil change tonight, and then I'm like, oh, football game's on. Oh, I'll just watch it. Oh, oh, f- uh, might as well scroll my phone. And um, I have this quote in my office that, you know, it's actually live, laugh, love. No, I have this quote in my office. uh, I wrote that and it's it's, fine. uh, I don't know where it came from. I didn't come up with it, but some, I don't know who did, but I I find it really powerful. And it's an addiction to distraction is the death of creative production. And I think that in this, in this world we're living in, it's a, it's a constant battle. For sure. Screens are tough. They're so pretty. (laughs) So enticing. What about doing art on an iPad versus analog on a canvas or paper? I mean, you can't really beat analog, but the iPad is so intuitive now and so fun. Like, treating it for the amazing tool that it is, like, we're so lucky to have these creative tools that help so much. Um, I love it all, but I will always be more drawn to, like, actual paint on a canvas or pen on paper um my favorite medium right now is spray paint because i've been doing more large scale scale murals and that's so satisfying there's it's just more satisfying when you're like drawing on a screen it just doesn't feel quite the same and you know people aren't going to experience it the same so you know the outcome can't ever be as personal and as like connecting as something just real in the world that you can like feel. So what about, where are you at with NFTs? Speaking I haven't done it. I haven't done any, but I'm not against it. I don't know. I just haven't found the right I just don't get it. Maybe I just don't get it. <laughs> that makes three of us. Yeah. Yeah. Think, but. yeah. I mean I yeah. I'm not against it. I would do it if it was the right project. Um but not it's not on my to-do list right now <laughs> with murals i think it's an interesting process because when we were doing the paint night you were mentioning you're like with murals it's like part-time like construction worker like half-time painter yeah yeah murals i think they get glorified a lot because they're so amazing and like so in your face but half the time when you show up you're like a construction worker you're scraping paint off the wall you're like spackling some shit you're fixing like a wire that's hanging down buds is familiar with spackling <laughs> he spackles a lot the uh, company yeah, that, bathroom that train <laughs> tunnel up there spackled yeah, you spackled right. that <laughs> night sorry <laughs> sorry yeah, to anyone derail. needs any spack work just <laughs> holler at your boy <laughs> okay i do you want to uh, come you, on yeah, some yeah, murals buds, yeah. buds can spackle you. those murals we'll get you up in the lift it'll be great <laughs> projectile spackle from the lift <laughs> So do you draw when you do a big mir- mural? Do you uh, there's those people that use projectors, right? Yeah. 
Do you do that because of the scale? I have, yeah, yeah. Because you have to? There's, you don't have to, which is cool. There's a lot mm. of different ways depending on what the wall is like. Having to rely on a projector <laughs> is not ideal because you're, uh, you have to have a power outlet. You have to be like X amount of feet from the wall for it to work. You have to go at night. If I'm by myself and I have like my iPad Pro on the ground while I'm 50 feet up in the air sketchy. trying to outline the projection, like that's sketchy, you know? Like, yeah. So I try not to rely on one technique or the other, but there's a lot of different ways that you can take your small image and put it up on the wall. Like you can grid it out, uh. like old school way. I use what's called a doodle grid a lot, and you kind of just like make random shapes on the wall and then take a photo of your design on the iPad, overlay it like with low transparency or it's a transparent version of your art and then you like have your image on your ipad or your phone while you're up in the lift and you're like okay this line goes from like that doodle to that doodle and it is surprisingly like really easy to do that that's crazy reference points yeah. yeah reference points and some people like doodle all over the wall and people are like like people yeah, how, will come doing? up yeah if people come up and they're like that is the worst mural i've ever seen <laughs> but they're like just wait you know so i try to do like I don't like to waste a lot of paint. You know, if you doodle all over the wall, you're like going through cans just for the underpainting. So I'll just do like the most minimal amount of paint and reference points that I can do. But that's how I usually do it. I'll do some sort of a grid system. But the projector's great if you're like at a quick mural and you only have a day to paint it and you don't want to spend like a whole day sketching it out. Wow. That's cool. You also said something like you sometimes you show up to a wall and you're like, People are like, what are you going to do? And you're like, uh... Yeah, the cool part is, like, setting yourself up, working with clients that know what to expect. Like, I can be like, hey, here's a sketch of what I'll probably do, but every wall is different. If I show up and there's some cool piece of architecture that I want to incorporate or work around, like, I need that creative freedom. But sometimes it is pressure where you show up and you're like, okay... I wanted to do this other thing, but now I want to do this because of the wall. And then, like, you only have X amount of time, and sometimes a lot of people need to sign off on a design. But other times you get to show up and just go full free flow stream of consciousness. Like, I've gotten to do murals, which are my favorite, where I don't plan anything, and they're, like, a manageable size that I can, like, sketch while I'm walking and just like freestyle it the whole way. And I think those turn out the best. Well, there's going to be a lot of people listening uh, that probably want some of your art, uh, like maybe a mural, maybe a custom tee, maybe a logo. Uh, just while we're on the topic, where where's the best way to reach you to make that happen? HannahEddieArt.com. Do you sell prints on there and stuff? I do sell prints. I have the T-shirts. shirts that I gave Happy you guys. Happy customer here. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like to do merch drops. I'll do like organic shirts i'll do limited runs of stuff because i don't have the capacity of like being a clothing company and that's not really like where my interest is um but if you order a shirt or something off of hannahedyart.com like tim's packing it and he's shipping it it's like a full little family affair so i appreciate everybody that's bought stuff and helped support us it's been amazing well Well, stuff looks amazing guest question from none other then a guy who I will not give an air horn to, <laughs> but we're going to let it go. Live, laugh, love. Uh, Preston Strout, here we go. Hey, Hannah. Preston here. Quick question. Uh, years ago, you and Tim rode a tandem bicycle across the country or a large portion of it. And at the time, I want to say you guys were both on this vegan, seemingly lentil-based diet. And if I recall correctly, you were in the back of the bike. So what I'm getting at here is, how'd you do it? How'd how'd you persevere thousands of miles on a bicycle downwind from a human gas machine? (laughs) Uh, Love your work. You're an inspiration. Hope you guys are having a good episode. Take care. Thanks, Preston. I'm going to... I'm going to tackle you and give him an air horn if you don't. Give That's him a little something. <laughs> Stupid. You need a little junior air horn. For yeah, she, brings like her, she brings her own on her phone. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> yep. um, 
Thank you, Preston. He's an inspiration. Maybe top three most creative people I've ever met in my life. Um, Tim and I did, in fact, ride a tandem bike from Washington State to New Hampshire with our skateboards on the back. You mean Washington, D.C.? Nope. Washington State. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it was psychotic. It was, we were returning the bike to my parents. It was, their, it was their bike, and they had tried to move out west. It didn't work out. They moved back out east and left their bike, and we were like, we'll ride it to you. Wow. So we did, because when we say something that we want to do, you gotta do we it. just do it, because life's too short. That being said, I was behind him the whole time. Luckily, the airflow, you know, we're going fast on that thing. Oh, yeah. The airflow is pretty good. But he did, like, there were a lot of days in the saddle, and he did wear, like, a pretty good thin hole in his chamois that I could pretty much see his butt crack the whole time. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it wasn't super glamorous, but I liked being in the back because I never had to steer or anything. And I was just kind of grooving. I'd just, like, put my head down and pedal. Just pedaling. Just pedal. Well, you must work through a lot of stuff mentally. But yeah. Like, what, do you, what did you take yeah, away from that? a lot of that? biking. It was a lot. There were a lot of days where I woke up and I was just like, I don't want to ride 75 miles again today. But sometimes you just got to do it. And it was very freeing because you just have everything that you need. Like we were fully self-supported and just had our tent and we would just like sleep in ditches and city parks and sprinklers would go off and soak our shit. And then we'd go skate and be like, okay, there were times where it felt like we were on a skate trip via bicycle and that felt better. So if I were to do it again, I'd probably do it a lot shorter and like just to skate parks and camp. Um, I don't recommend anyone biking through North Dakota ever. So if you're out there and you're thinking about it. With just a lot of nothing? It's just flat. Yeah. Well, it's like flat and just up and down. Like, I thought it was just going to be like we were coasting, but it's like boring. How long did it take? We t- it the whole trip was like two and a half months, but we could have done it faster. But we had like weddings, like Caroline's wedding and Tim was marrying them. And I would, yeah, air horns for her. I was in the wedding, so we like both brought, I brought like a bridesmaid's dress in the, it was crazy. But wow, is all I can say. Yeah, it was a lot. We biked like 75 miles a day for two months. You didn't take some days off? We took some days off. Yeah, we took some like days off. Like if you were really feeling it, you'd be like, yeah, let's we sleep were... in this ditch all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we were like saying yes to everybody too. If we would meet somebody at the skate park or the bar or something. You and had they the were yes like, rule going. Yeah. It was, I mean, not like always. If somebody was really creepy, we wouldn't <laughs> say yes. But a lot of people were like, hey, come over. We'll make you guys dinner and you can camp in our yard. And we'd be like, okay. And they were like, Tight. oh, whoa, you're actually coming. Um so it was just really fun. But yeah, the to Preston's question, that part was not the issue. Did you listen to the Queen song Bicycle on repeat the whole ride? You know, we did listen to that. We listened to I feel like that gets you stoked just to bike. What Two and a half that? months of that song on repeat. <laughs> on repeat. <laughs> oh, there was one song that we kept playing that was so down with the sickness? Funny. Well, definitely. Yeah, Chris, we got into that. Chris, would you be down that. to do that and we'll listen to Poland the whole way? Yeah, the new <laughs> yeah. little Yachty song, yeah, Poland? Just, well, it's only like it's a, only minute a minute long. long so how you, many you, times yeah, do you think we'll build it? I think that might drive you into a state of psychosis. Yeah, just you might lose it. Just Chris right mm-hmm. into the uh, Also, ward. I would pay the to walk. see you guys. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you know the song. But who you... would be on the front or who would be on the back of the table? I would just be in a sled in the back and pulled. All the way across Wendy's the country. Is just pulling you. <laughs> Buzz okay. is just asleep, like a little, you know, like a little there, baby carriage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we would be fueled 110% by smelling salts, though, too. That was what oh, we needed. Oh, true. We needed those. You know what? Have you ever done one? No. Snap it. All right. This is their first time for a run through wall smelling salts. This would have helped you on your bike. Your bike. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you guys these are there in two uh, months. These are non GMO. Do I need to like. Oh, we must be swimming these things. Are we about to do three? These are grass fed, by the way. Are these organic? Yeah, they yeah, are grass fed. Yeah, free range. Local? They're local. Art- artisanal? <laughs> They're artisanal. Yep. Uh, okay. Grass fed. So you crush ones. S- so you squeeze it. They're definitely uh, farm to table. Yeah, they're farm to table. So squeeze it, and then you just kind of work it up to your nose like this. Like, 
Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, snaps. Keep, get in there. Deeper. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo, baby! Wow. Oh, these are fresh, oh. huh? Is this oh. fresh? Oh! oh. Wow. Woo. <clears throat> wow. All right. Woo! We're back. Holy... Those would have. Uh, you, you let's go. Yeah, That's there a it good is. Batch right there. You could have. You could have maybe done I'm that crying. trip in a, in more like three weeks if you had those. I think it wouldn't have been two and I a half. I don't know. Months. That doesn't really like fire me up. It just, <laughs> <laughs> we should start numbering the batch. <laughs> That's a good batch. Yeah. Whoa, you guys are insane. Run through wall smelling salts available bombhole.com. We just got a fresh order. Uh, in there. That's a good. Yeah. Good these batch. Would I would paint a mural so fast yeah. with these. Mm-hmm. Snap Maybe sniff. we'll have you do a run through wall smelling salts Ooh, mural on the side of our sick. building Whoa. that we rent that we won't get permission to do. And then we'll for. run through it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll paint the wall you run through. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, let's get into another guest question. This one's from a great artist, and his name's Lucas Beaufort. Mm. Mm. He is Luca French. Beaufort. He is Francais. Okay, allons y. Hey, Hannah, this is Lucas. Lucas Beaufort, um, I have a question for you. What would be your dream project? That's it. Damn. That's a heavy, heavy question. Heavy. Heavy question. Let's manifest it right now. Okay. I do, now that I'm sitting in here, a dream project that has to do with snowboarding is my art on a snowboard. And there's an ad of me doing a frontside air on it. Wow. Just saying. That would be dope. Let's get that. Seems to like happen. a very yeah. that's like like a very easy dream to yeah. do. You know, I like to set my dreams achievable. True. And then I'm like, yeah. There's like 14. Like, you're gonna be every brand manager at any brand's like, uh. Yep, yeah, let's get on the horns right now. You let's must have had board graphics. Yes, so you just haven't had my, the air. My first one was because of Barrett Christie. Dope. Which was insane having like a childhood idol <laughs> call me and be like, Hey, do you want to do your childhood dream? And yeah, that's been fantastic. I've done a few boards with GNU. Um couldn't be more grateful to do that. It's so cool to see my like if I I'm at the resort or something, and I see someone riding around on a board that has my art on it. It's like, that's full circle. It's great. I'm sick of seeing the boards that don't have dope art on them, too. That was going to be my worst trend in snowboarding. Dude, it but is, But I have right? another one, too. So so worst trend right now, right now, let's elaborate on the graphics on boards. Yeah. Um, I mean, I miss the, like, super illustrative, like, everybody always just having some cool... Art on boards, and it, I like a simple graphic also, but if it's intentional, you know, like if you can tell that like this was their last female board to do on the whatever, you, you know, can you tell, can yeah. tell, you can tell. Some super easy, that someone did it in Photoshop yeah. and like freaking our illustrator in yeah. three minutes. Yeah, I just like, I you mean, can tell. these are amazing canvases, so like let's have a little, let's put a little respect on them, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's such a draw. That's one of the coolest things about snowboarding and skating and is is the graphics and the rich culture of art and snowboarding coinciding. It's important. Dude, yeah. when you make a dope graphic that stands the test of time, that's the coolest that's thing right legendary. there. legendary. I mean, I think my favorite, first favorite graphic was the Peter Line Rainbow. And like I'm saying, like that's really simple. But it was very intentional and, like, wasn't made to sell. It was just made because he's like, this would be fun or funny or something, you know? But yeah. that Today resonated. It's still dope. And it's still so cool. And it doesn't, so I'm, I'm not saying it has to have, like, some oil painting on the board, but, like, just something. Because we, like, also, it's different than skateboard graphics because those you go through all the time and it's easier to just, like, pick up whatever. Those are disposable. Whatever. Yeah. But on a snowboard, you have to be a little more intentional, um, but I love that. It's an interesting one because I hope that the shop owners and the salespeople uh, and the marketing people that work at brands are listening to that. Mm-hmm. Because what what in my experience, what happens from making a graphic that you're excited about and then having it shot down, it is due to 
somebody, a shop owner saying, well, what am I supposed to do with this? I can't sell that. Yeah. I know if I have a board that says, like, whatever, just the K2 gra- yeah. or Solomon Even a on rep the bottom, at a sales meeting, they, they they're going to your dreams. They're like, yeah. I can't sell that. Nobody's going to buy that. Yeah, no one's going to buy that. that. But, it, but in, in turn, there it's a double-edged sword. we got to sell snowboards, but... We also like what brought us in it to it in the first place because it was cool and unique and a lot of those shop guys or reps will say that though and they can be so wrong. Yeah, they like just the don't Peter give Lime it the board, chance. Right? Yeah. Or no, maybe it didn't sell that well. I don't. No, I probably. I mean, it just depends. But yeah. that they they're basing their info on the season before. Right, things and, change. Yeah, things and I change think having and, like you know when I was growing up, most of the fe- like girl graphics were like butterflies and flowers and stuff and Mm -hmm. i wasn't down for that but it was kind of the only option and like those types of people were like oh but that's what the girls want to buy but until we break that stigma which i i think is happening now and there's so many unisex boards and stuff now um but it took the first few people being like oh yeah maybe we should do what the writers are saying or what these artists are saying um and just try something like we got to try stuff but i do understand that it is a business at the end of the day so but let's have some fun let's have some fun sidebar talking to lucas who's an incredible artist um he was like just you know how he is he's just going he's chatterbox and he's like (laughs) excited he's just you you know you know you're you know him well um he said something in his slew of excitement that I wrote down, and I wonder if you can speak on this ethos. Being a true artist isn't about putting paint on a canvas. It's how you interact with the world. I love that. And I, like, huge shout out to Lucas, like, has been an inspiration. I think he's done a good job of, like, balancing maybe commercial art with gallery art and murals and stuff, and definitely has set a good path for the rest of us to kind of like keep our hands in all the things that we love doing and not settling on one lane, which is really rad. And he's so supportive and positive in the art community and in our board sport world also. Um, So he's a prime example of like, he'll say yes if certain people want him to go somewhere. And I definitely value that. And it's so huge to Put yourself out there. People like to connect to the human behind all the things that we're doing. And I think like podcasts like this are such a huge platform for people to be able to share their stories and just we all just want to connect and learn about each other. And when you meet authentic people, it goes a long way. And I think Lucas is a prime example of that. Yeah, He's like ultimate hype man Mm -hmm. also, which is great. Mm hmm. And I've seen them do projects too, where they fly him out to do like the outside of a hotel, like a high end one. For sure. And you just see his sick pattern all over a building, and yeah. you know it's his yeah. just by the look because he's got that vibe and yeah. talented human. Yeah. He loves Chinese pugs like I do too, the pugs. Shout out to pugs. And he yeah, only drinks IPAs. <clears throat> really? IPAs just only. IPAs and just like farting. <laughs> um, so yeah, IPA is a tough go. Like in in the in the vein of of kind of searching for inspiration and art, I, cause I I find this stuff fascinating. I was watching one of the, you have all these like profile pieces where you do a collaboration with a brand and then they kind of tell the story behind it, which is really fun. But you were talking about like your art and it, you know splitboarding through Tahoe and like the trees being so the brown of the bark being so vibrant and. Uh, I guess, like, splitboarding being a, a huge muse for your inspiration. Yeah, splitboarding definitely gave me a second wind on my love of snowboarding. Kind of gave me a different pace, and I really loved the time spent just out in the mountains. was so inspiring to my art and clearing my head, you know, like, on the skin track on the way up. I'm writing down so many ideas. Like, most of these phrases that I come up with are, like, while I'm splitboarding or mountain biking or something outside where my head is clear and my perspective on the world is a little bit different I kind of like can pull back a little bit rather than when I'm just at home like on whatever sketching it's a different experience so just the pace of split boarding and being out in the mountains and having that whole experience is just like a good time 
and I kind of was getting over the like get as many laps as you can like at the resort and like people just kind of I don't know that energy started getting a little more draining so being out in the mountains like more on my own pace and only riding taking it in (laughs) it's great no tracks I thought I was your muse you know last night you were and (laughs) I'm excited to paint some more anytime <clears throat> that search for inspiration is key. It's it's interesting too because I think oftentimes myself and and probably a lot of people listening find themselves like stuck in that grind of like all right you work 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 and it, it's it's like your your balance is like is that a like, Rihanna song? Yeah, that is. R- that work, was work, pretty work, good. Work, work, work. Yeah. Yeah. I thought yeah. you were singing. <laughs> yeah, that's a reference. Shout out to Rihanna. Let's give her an air horn. Let's give her an air horn. Um, she's the homie. Yeah, she, yeah sure. she's dope. And uh, call me Rihanna. There, there's definitely a situation where we we find ourselves bogged down with work, and it's it's like inversely when I listen to you, you're like, well, I need to take time to recreate so I'm inspired so I can work like like that that. In that search for inspiration is equally as important as putting in time. And I think that applies not just to an artist, but even if you're working in a marketing agency or problem solving, like even an accountant could be out there split board and be like, oh, maybe there's a way I can save money here. Like, I think that that creativity doesn't just pertain to art, but it pertains to really any any craft and making the time to actively seek inspiration and taking time for yourself and work less will make you work more efficiently. Yeah, I think that goes back to like your distractions. You know, if you try to go do stuff that you can't really be distracted, like you have to be focused when you're on your dirt bike. Like you can't be thinking about other stuff. So getting into that flow state and mental state of like being in the moment, I think is where creativity and just like that sort of passion and inspiration Mm -hmm. comes from. Like as cheesy as any of this can sound like this is real shit like it is yeah it just happens when you're like you can't deny it you Mm -hmm. know like if you don't know what that's like then go try to figure something out that gets you like that like Mm -hmm. if you're sitting here listening and you're like what on earth are they talking about like figure your shit out like (laughs) find something like there's something out there like you could be playing music or whatever like Mm -hmm. there's something that's going to get you in the moment and open up your brain to some mm-hmm. some more stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's something too about being cognizant of just when you do an activity, you, you like okay, let's just do a, a let's take a little inventory here. I'm gonna go do an activity. How did I feel after? How did I feel when I got back to my truck? How did this activity make me feel? Right? And then it seems like you figured out your activities. All right, I like splitboarding. I like mountain biking. I throw the bike in the back of the truck. I feel great. You know, those are things. I think it's like it's cognizant or that inversely you do. You try something else and you're like, yeah, like, you know, for me, like I love sports. And sometimes like after screaming at the TV and I go to bed and I'm like stressed out, I'm like, how did that make me feel? <laughs> or yeah, like, you know, video games, even, even video games. Like I, I'll like play NHL 22 and I'll be dangling twig out there <laughs> and I'm just freaking absolutely a problem demolishing people on the ice. But then I go I'm like, about it. and then I'm like, yeah, exactly. But then I go to bed and I'm just laying there and I'm like stressed out and shaking and I'm like, yeah. maybe I don't need to play NHL 22 right before bed. <laughs> yeah, that's a morning, that's a morning activity. Yeah. yeah. But the mountain bike and this. and the, Yeah. I mean. Sometimes I feel like that also this kind of ties into what you're saying, like there's videos behind that come out like with an art collab or something and kind of just organically cameras started coming out while I was doing these things that I love. And it's kind of, it's a buzzkill, you know, like those are those activities that like are just pure fun for me. Snowboarding has always just been pure fun and the times where it was sneaking into like taking it more seriously or being more competitive it was sucking the fun out and there's a slippery slope so sometimes when the camera comes out it sucks the fun out for me some people it's the opposite and they can only perform when the camera's out which is great but those are the nights I fall asleep like a little more worked up because I'm like I don't want to watch that footage, you know, like, I just want to go snowboard, like, I, 
set high expectations for myself when when I know no one cares except for m myself, but that's like a thing that I have to reckon with as well. Well, that's that just brings me back to the reference of the Craig Kelly quote I reference on the show all the time, but he he essentially the punchline of the quote is my highest appreciation goes out to the snowboarder that's just out there for the experience, right? And that's Craig saying that, and he's yeah. a freaking samurai. Yeah, and we should she, listen to Craig for sure. Yeah, so you're. It seems like you got some Craig inspo there. I mean, I also live with a pro snowboarder who like somehow danced that line so well in his career where like he was able to do the stuff that he loved and like maintain a sense of fun so i had a good partner role model through it too this ties in perfectly to a guest question number two from my friend that's a really good friend that already asked a question that i'm going to be really nice to named preston strout Hey, Hannah, Preston here. Quick request. Can you make a snowboard movie someday? Something that is produced and directed by Hannah Eddy, the artist. Something that's your vision. I don't want any brands involved. No media outlets. This isn't part of somebody's marketing plan with Instagram teaser release dates and a fully orchestrated press release rollout and a premiere schedule. This is pure art, you adding something to the uh, the world of snowboarding like you do through through your paintings, but in film form. I just feel like a lot of people would want to be involved with it, and you could make something really special. I don't know how the hell you're going to pay for it. You're going to have to figure that out. Anyway, please discuss, and then... And then please do it. I was thinking he should pay for it, throw an idea. Out I'll like tell you that. what, if, you know, I'll, I don't like a lot of those. The strategy he's got behind this, <laughs> you know, I don't know if I back it. Yeah. You know, but anyway, continue. I mean, if it's coming from Preston, you gotta like at least listen, right? It's not a, it's not the worst idea I've heard, but kind of like a Thomas Campbell, he's done such cool stuff like bridging the art, skate, surf. He did that Rome cinema. project. Too. Yeah, yeah, and. I mean, I don't know when, but let's not, we'll, we'll add it to the list. What, Preston always had like a little book of ideas at High Cascade. I'll put it in my little book of ideas. Thanks, Preston. All right, we're going to take a second and talk to you guys about our favorite binding company, Union. You may be able to see Buds. He gets Unions. You may be able to see those at the Milo Pro Sale. Um, Keep that on the download, oh, bro. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so for unions, if you're interested in uh, split boarding, they make the Explorer binding. It's great for, it's paired well with uh, a fistful of granola. Yes. Uh, looking at uh, bark on trees while ascending up the mountain. True. They have dope accessories, too. I got some poles in the mail yeah, yesterday, can, collapsible poles. Yeah, you can point. Oh, Union makes those? Yeah, dude. I didn't know that. Of course you did. You can point at stuff. Uh, you can point Skins. at. You can flex all of your knowledge of the mountains and just tell everybody all the peaks you know, even though your people you're with are completely uninterested in your knowledge of the mountains. Um, what are the other bindings you ride? Uh, well, I, I'm just saying for split boarding, if you want the best ones for going Explore. down, oh, you, going want the, down yeah. you want the union split board bindings. Because the other ones, they might be great for going up, but I'm not a fitness nerd. Yeah. I care about going down. True. You know? And you want to jump and yeah. have some control. Do a 540. So head on over to Union Bindings website. Get yourself some bindings. You won't be disappointed. All right, Hannah. Yes. I got a question for you. You've done a lot of collabs. We're talking Skull Candy, Nixon, Pow, Hydra Flask, GNU, uh, K2, the bomb hole, obviously the most prevalent, the bomb hole. Most prestigious, most probably. prestigious and highest paying, I believe, probably. For I don't sure. Know. Um, what was your favorite collab you've done? I've done some cool ones and they've all been really fun, but I got to do Kimmy Fasani's pro model Dragon Goggles. Wow. That was a pretty cool phone call. I've known, had the pleasure of knowing Kimmy, and she's been such an inspiration on and off the snowboard to all of us, I'm sure. And Dragon, I used to draw the Dragon logo in my notebook in middle school. You know, like, they've always been so sick, and I've been down for them for a long time. So getting to do that was, like, A, an honor to work with Kimmy, and B, do it on goggles that I've been a fan of for a long time. So 
That was a pretty special one. That's like, I'm hanging on to those goggles. Killer. And uh, we, I, I briefly mentioned POW. I know you and Tim are big protect our winter advocates. I'd love to hear you talk about that. Yeah, working with POW has been super cool. I've gotten to do some art for them and some advocacy for them. That kind of started by Tim and I, you know, it was during our cabin days and learning about how to live sustainably and how to use our voices for positive change. And we decided to make a little book called Split the Difference. And it was about split boarding and it was a fundraiser for POW because we loved what POW was doing, but we weren't involved with them at all. So another time where we were just like, well, we like what they're doing. Why don't we just like do our own version and just raise money for them in our own way? And obviously POW was hyped and kind of brought us on board. We got to do some of their like summits with the creatives and athletes and scientists and stuff. I mean, they've got some smart people over there. And if anybody thinks it's like a front, it's not. Like they know what they're doing. They, they're really trying to do good work. And Jeremy Jones is a great human that means super well, super good dude, and has built a team around him of really smart people. So it, they're all about imperfect activism, and that can tie so much into my art where it's like, yeah, I'm not doing, like, the most eco-friendly thing. Like, I know what I'm doing. I'm spray painting on walls. Like, there's more eco things I could be doing, but it's bigger than just me. So the imperfect activism is something that we can all really latch into. Like, you don't have to be like, oh, I'm not down for POW because I ride a snowmobile. Like, I, you that, know, it's hard. But Totally. I, I feel that it's really cool that you said that because, like, to be honest with you, I, I love uh, climate advocacy, but I love riding dirt bikes. So I feel as though if I was to post something – that somebody could just point their finger right at me and be like, dude, you're ruining the fucking environment. So I'm just like, well, I don't want to be a hypocrite. So right. that's actually really cool to hear. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> that we just have to like take the ego out of it and just be like, hey, all of us are consumers. People who work high up in POW aren't all just like vegans living off the grid. And that's not what's going to save us or help us, really. It's so much bigger. The politics are really everything and that's super fucked up and scary because I don't I mean none of us really understand it or like trust it we live in a crazy time right now where like there's not one right answer but there are politicians who are at least conscious that the planet is warming and people are drastically affected by that so I try to use my art as a voice that's like approachable with POW. Like I like to do fun art with them. And like I got to do a voting piece for Patagonia and stuff like bringing people in with this lighthearted art that's like, hey, it's connecting us. We're all trying and nobody's perfect. And I think that we all just have to really realize that. And being an imperfect activist is way better than just being passive and letting all this stuff go by. And it doesn't even, like, we don't all have the right answers. And there's not just, like, one person who's going to save us. But we need to at least try. So working with POW has been super cool. We also did another, we did, like, a cookbook, plant-based cookbook for them, too. And just make it fun and, and use our strengths. Like, I'm not good at going and talking to Congress, but Tim went and talked to Congress. You know, like... He's talked to politicians. Just find your strength and, like, use your voice in whatever way that is. Like, it doesn't matter if you ride dirt bikes and snowmobiles. You can still care about the planet. Damn, that's cool. I love that. I love that. And uh, some pe I mean, people will, I don't, people will talk shit on me saying that. Mm -hmm, but, like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If we're all trying a little bit, like, I know it's bigger than us. Mm -hmm. And... People can, like, chew us up, and I think we just have to not be afraid of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys put yourselves out here, like, out for everybody to judge every day, and you just kind of just have to keep doing what you think is right. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Those, those, are, those are powerful words, and I, I've loved that 
Um, I love that, like, you know, again, I, I use this term a lot, but there's just a lot of finger pointing happening that this, you're the problem, you're the problem. And, and just like your art, it's kind of like, instead of saying you're the problem, here's maybe a solution or here's a better way to do it. And I think that's just so much more healthy. Yeah, I think so too. And I think it really comes down to perspective. You know, like if you think X, Y, and Z is the problem and you don't see a solution, like maybe try to learn something and not just like be like, that's the that's wrong. Because it's so easy to just do yeah, it's that. it's so easy, huh? And it's so easy to just like blindly follow along and not do your own research. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not telling everybody to go like vote for some stuff that they don't believe in, but at least be a little educated and intentional with your decisions voting and in life. Like, because I don't have the answers, but I'm going to read some stuff and try to learn the best version for me. I don't know. Very, very well said. Uh, I love it. But I don't want this to get like preachy either. No, it's it's the exact opposite. Yeah, it, that's what's yeah. that's what's so, such a draw about it is that it's it's not preachy. And I think the preachiness, and like uh, even some 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 stuff might even err on the side of like moral superiority, uh, is a huge turnoff. And yeah. and you're and approaching it without the preachiness or moral support superiority makes it just from a human nature standpoint much more attractive. Yeah, and I think Pow is good at that. Like their main message is just like. We want to. We want clean air, clean water, and a healthy planet for the future. Like, how is that? How has that gotten polarized? Mm -hmm. Like, politics are messing all this up for us. Mm -hmm. Like, at the end of the day, we all just want the same thing. Yeah, totally. I don't know how it got so complicated. Well, money. Money. Yeah, there's how. a lot of politicians involve a lot of cr cash yeah. in their programs. Money's the problem. That's why we can't have cool looking snowboards all the time. That's why we can't. <laughs> but, Unlimited budgets, cool stuff like that. All right, Hannah, we're going to get into hot takes. Hot takes. Let's do it. How are you feeling? I feel great. Okay. I've been giving you hot takes all day. Yeah, you've True. been dropping True. takes, <laughs> ripping takes all day. Ripping those hot takes. Okay. First one. Yeah, you know, this is as it pertains to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Michael Jordan. And or greatest of all time, or even just your favorite snowboarder, both male and female? This one's tough. I'm going to say female for me. We've named two that were high up on my list, Kimmy and Barrett. But I learned tail grabs because of Shannon Dunn. Wow, great answer. Shannon Dunn Downing. And tail grabs are my favorite. So she kind of like changed my world. I had a sick poster of her doing a tail grab. I like grab. that. So Shannon Dunn. Love that. And then for males, probably Jamie Lynn for his like art and snowboarding. Wow. Great answer. Who's the go to the art world? For me, it's too hard. Too hard? Right. Yeah. There's too many inspos. But I did mention Margaret Kilgallen, and she just was a badass and, like, did her own thing. What about Danny from the shipping department at the bomb hole of his mm. painting yeah. last night? Yeah, true. Do you think Danny he's put, just after that painting, he breaking, could be... Breaking boundaries out yeah. there. He's just blowing minds. He is blowing In the minds. art world. Yeah. yeah. There's a buzz. There's a sure. buzz going around. Yeah, there's a buzz going around <laughs> the office, that's for sure. Okay, next one. Most underrated border. Most underrated border, I think, is Tucker Andrews. Nice. Great answer. Also great human. And was a camper and then became a very good friend. Also went split boarding with you guys in Pow and Chow, forgot his poles, used um, some logs. Yeah. Oh, nice. And still ro rode like this <laughs> hesh's line out of any of us with <laughs> sticks coming out of his back. That's so cool. Um, how about for female is Maria Dabari, I think. Or she's probably shredding harder than anyone still and just did her own thing. Mm -hmm. okay, steel or powder? Powder. 
Who's got the best style ever? Tim Eddie. Oh, I like that. Brownie points there. Yeah. Love you. <laughs> Favorite snowboard video? Favorite snowboard. That's a, that, w- that took me off guard. Um, <laughs> oh, lame. Okay. Great answer. Good answer. Okay, this is a heavy one. Brace yourself. Best board graphic ever. Ooh, ooh. I mean, I did mention the Peter Line Rainbow, and I think I'm going to stick with that. Boom. Iconic. The D23 or the Forum, the original or the... The Forum. <laughs> the Forum. Yeah, OG. <laughs> if you could see one musical artist dead or alive, who would it be? I would see OG Black Sabbath, like Masters of Reality tour days, early 70s. Respect for wow. that answer. Okay, uh, here we go. We got a couple more. If you had to go heli boarding with three people, just good times. You're just whacking pow turns. It's great conditions, no cameras. You can bring anybody in the world. Yep. Who are you taking? Tim, my dad, and my sister. Wow. I would, what, what a feel good chopper ride that's going to be. My yeah. mom is like making chili back at the lodge, <laughs> hyping it up. I, I wanted to include that you can bring celebrities yeah. as well, just if you want Family's to. Family's dope, though. Yeah. Can keep Bam. Same. Okay. We'll keep it, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so we talk about the beaver slap in the lift line. You got snow on your board. You know, some people get to that, the, the chairlift, and they like to just give it a big old smack to get the snow off. Uh, what's your take on that? I'm down. You're down? Yeah. No rules. No rules. Okay. Do your thing. Okay, here we go. No rules. Last one. Worst trend. Powder panic. Powder panic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow, what a well thought yes, answer. Yes, I love that one. Yeah, that's like... Powder panic's the worst. It's the worst. I'm like, we got so many bigger problems out there than like having Joe Schmo like getting all stressed out trying to beaver slap up in my scene in the lift line. I like, hate when Joe Schmo does that. Yeah. You know, if you're listening to this, Alex Andrews... <laughs> Take a note of this. <laughs> Called down. him out on his powder pan. Dude, he has a, he, in his Astro van, he used to have a siren that he'd put on the no. front of his car That's for powder level. days so he could pass people going up the canyon. Come on. That's next That's, level. So, what do you think about that move? Alex over I'm the not top. A he's Andrews. not a fan. I mean, he's a split boarder too. He should know better. Not cool. Yeah. Does he use a siren when he's split boarding <laughs> up <laughs> trying to clap? Yeah, in the skin track, just like, <laughs> out of my way. <laughs> He's got an air horn yeah. to move people out of the way. Ah, That's the what sprintboarding is all about, is just yelling at people and racing to the parking I lot. I mean, these days, you'd be surprised. It's true. All right. Powder Panic is maybe the best answer yeah, we've got. Yeah, it's a good, really good one. Yeah. It sucks. I like it. And what was the other one we talked about that was your part beat, too? Oh, just like graphics. Bad board graphics. Bad board mm. graphics. Just like not, you didn't try. Yeah. There's, there's people out there who would give their left foot... To yeah. make a board graphic, like just call somebody else. If They'd you go don't... prosthetic limb yeah. on the next powder day <laughs> yeah. just yeah. to have a graphic. They don't, yeah, don't waste a nice canvas. Buds. <laughs> yeah, dog. What are you cracking there? For the listeners, I have a uh, white can with black writing that says pub beer. Yeah, what's it good for? <laughs> it's good for cheap fun, and it's uh, good if you like beer. Yeah. How many of those things would you say is recommended to drink on an average night if you want to have a good time? You know, it's really a choose your own adventure. You can go one, you can go two, all the way to 43. Yeah. I wouldn't go too far past 43, though, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you're going to enjoy some uh, alcoholic beverages responsibly, of course, pick pub beer. And with that being said, we need you to roll the dice that we got on the table here. Let's do it. I always wondered why no one drank those with you, but I'm realizing it's because it's warm. We got cold ones. We also do these in the morning a lot yeah. of times. And uh I'm not a big morning drinker, but <laughs> <laughs> but when you're in the zone. All right. Roll them, I'll tell you what you gotta do. Seven. Seven eleven. Seven, this is a great question. Who's one of your favorite people to party with? I mean uh, excuse me, it's the pub beer. <laughs> but <laughs> excuse you, buds. It's the pub beer, man. <laughs> Uh, I'd say a group of ladies known as the Pamela's. A group? How many are there? Uh, it's grown over the years, but like 
seven or so. Wow. Yeah. All right. You don't have your board behind you, but for the listeners, they like to know about the setups mm-hmm. that you ride. Uh, what, what's your setup? The split board I ride, which is what I ride the most, is a K2 Marauder. It's unisex, super fun. Um, shout out to Tommy J for letting me snowboard and encouraging me to snowboard more than I probably would on my own, which is cool for the non just like pro snowboarders. I feel like there's a place for all of us who love the thing that we all do. Um, What else do I ride? Oh, the party platter is really fun. That's a K2 board also. And then the K2 split board bindings are great. All the the whole K2 split board setup is my uh, jam. What about your regular board if you're not split boarding? Uh what bindings, what angles? Do you detune it? Do you wax it? I maybe give the edges like a little once over and I wax and if I didn't wax, tool dude would <laughs> be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't wax if it was up to just me, but um, I like going fast too, so you gotta put in the work. Stance is like eighteen positive three, twenty inches probably. Posy posy. Yeah. Feel good for the carves. Yeah, you can still go backwards on it too. Let's be honest. I'm not doing that very far, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool. Any uh, any other? Uh, you want to plug any gear that you rock, like outerwear, any other things like that? Not really. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. Any paintbrush sponsors to mention or anything? Um, Grolsch paint. Grolsch. Is it Grolsch? What's it called? Gouache. Oh, gouache. gouache. <laughs> it's the gouache. gouache. Okay. No, 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 okay. no paint sponsors. We need to get you like a signature color or something. That'd be dope. Yeah, Montana. Like, there's some spray paint. Like, you get signature cans. Holy smokes. <sighs> Wow. I have a, yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. All right, I got a hard-hitting question before we wrap this thing up. Kind of corny, kind of life advicey, but, uh, you know, for the listener that's out there that hasn't taken the quote-unquote plunge that you have, that's thinking about, oh, I want to be an artist, I want to design things, I want to paint things, I want to get in the industry and make cool board graphics... What advice do you have for them? I would advise to make art that's authentic to you and feels like you're putting yourself into your work. That way it stands out. And at least you're having fun while you're doing it because at the end of the day, that's what's most successful. Like if you've created a life where you can make the stuff that you want to make, then is that not being successful? Like maybe you have another job and that's fine. Like side hustles are great. And setting yourself up to not be living nervous that you're not going to get a call from somebody, I think is really important. And not just being like, I listened to this podcast and this person told me to just quit my job and like do what I love. <laughs> Like, there's a lot more to it and a lot of connections and things you got to learn along the way. So make sure that you're putting in the work and figuring out if there is a lane for you. And if there is and things are starting to snowball, then that's when you can kind of take that plunge. That would be my advice. That's what I like. People hit me up all the time. Like, how I'm going full time freelance. Like, what should I do? And I'm like are you good? Like, are you set up a little bit? Have you saved a little bit of money at least? Because unfortunately we all need to buy groceries and stuff. So it's a, it's a balance and not putting yourself into a box right away and figuring out kind of what works, I think is important. Phenomenal. I've heard freelancers, they should, before they jump in, you need to have like six months to a year. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would definitely recommend like, having some money put away 
so that you're not just saying yes to just shit ass yeah. projects mm -hmm. and just like underselling other artists yeah, too because you're so desperate totally and you'll burn out like doing all this stuff that's just like so bad and you just are not into it but you're like oh, i gotta pay for this or whatever like you're gonna burn out you could ruin your own brand too because you're absolutely. doing the wrong work absolutely and I've gotten to get to a place where I can be intentional with who I work with. So like all these clients and brands that I work with, I want them to share similar ethos to me or I connect with them in some way. So that's another important thing to like work with people that you believe in the product. Cause at the end of the day, you got to work with people that support you and you share ideas. And you got to be ready for some uh, cold nights, maybe, because yeah. it's uh, starving artists is a thing, right? It is a thing. The, another thing, from my perspective, that works really well for you as well, just to go back on stuff, is is uh, the 100 Days of Art and putting that on your Instagram. And then I remember seeing that and being like, damn, Hannah's is doing something cool every single day. Well, it, you know, that's a great one for, you know, any, any artist to say, A, sharpen your teeth. B, let people know that you're you're putting stuff out there because chances are one of your friends will see it and, you know, who yeah. knows? Yeah, and that's what happened too. Like I really wanted to get into murals. So I got some smaller mural gigs and put it out there. And then that's when people noticed, you know, it's like I'm not just saying all this stuff as an idea. Like I actually lived through it and saw the power of intention and just putting out the shit that you want to do and like the type of projects that you want at the end and like the type of artist or person you want to be like just start putting it out there incredible where can people find you if they want to reach out to you and get some art uh hannaheddyart.com and my instagram is hannaheddyart uh lastly would you like to throw out any thank yous i just want to thank everybody for supporting my art and I couldn't be more grateful like when I send out packages to so many different countries and different places like it's an honor to get to do what I love and I hope to continue to do that so thanks everybody we're stoked um I want to say thank you to all of our listeners I want to say thank you to you for coming on the show mm -hmm. uh, everybody that tunes in everybody that supports we really really appreciate you and I think we should leave him with the with the 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 rock quote. Let's send him off with the the rock quote that you got. Your your, quote? your quote about spinning around on the rock. Oh yeah. I thought you meant like the rock. I like, thought you meant yeah, Dwayne, Dwayne the Rock Dwayne Johnson. Johnson. I'm sure yeah. he's got a good quote. one. Yeah, I'm sure there's some great. Ones. I bet he's got great quotes. But yeah, everybody, we're floating on a rock in space. We don't know why we're here. Do the things that make you happy. Be nice to each other, and just have a good time. Well, we appreciate you guys over and out from the bomb hole. We'll see you next week.